Good evening. Come on in. Welcome to the Kiss Collective. It's your girl, Kristen Alicia, and I am here with yet another tough conversation, okay? But we're making our way through, and I have to say that, you know, um, it's been pretty exciting. It's been pretty exciting to be able to see people, um, you know, just working on themselves and um, taking the pain that they've been through and getting to their purpose in it. The Kiss Collective is a creative space where we try to tell the stories of the, un, the, the unheard, people who feel like they haven't been able to tell their stories. Um, and we try to just promote community involvement and restore a message of hope. So these two young ladies that I have here with me today, um, if you have missed the last two episodes, you've missed a lot. We will do like a little recap today just because we're going to bring some things together um, and then we do have another guest who's going to tell her story. Again, the KISS Collective is a creative space. We stand in solidarity with, in solidarity with all of the, I won't say victims, but the survivors, the overcomers, those who have taken their pain and use it as a stepping stone to get to the next level. We stand in solidarity with them and um, we do want to let you know that these are raw, real conversations. And a lot of times for a lot of people who have been on this podcast, it's their first time telling their story. So um, we ask for grace. We ask you to interact. We will be checking the live. We will be, you know, getting some feedback and things like that. Um, and again, if this is going to be too much of a conversation for you, I do implore you to um, do what you got to do. Um, but I do want to say to parents, this is going to be something. One of, it's going to be something you want to think about. It's going to be something you want to mull over. Um, and again, like I said, it's we're all about getting our community to a next level. So if you have to have the hard conversations, you have to have the uncomfortable conversations with your children. Do so so that we can lift each other up and we can get to the next level. So I am going to bring these young ladies in and again we just want to have a real conversation and we're going to um, do a little recap and then we'll wait for our game. Just a little little bit of a recap. <laughs> a little bit of a recap. We've actually had some, some really great response so far. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Angie. <laughs> Angie is a mama bear and literally, a, literally she has um, some beautiful children that she takes care of. Seven boys. Well, look, I'm saying that she takes care Maybe. of and, and that she's rearing, okay? Um, and she also is a child care provider. Yeah, I'm and my baby she, she's doing the work, right? So she's doing the work in her portion of the world just by being an awesome child care provider, being an awesome mother, being an advocate, advocate for children, and, um, and working for herself. So, Angie, you want to tell us a little bit about how you got, how we got here? Cause you, okay, because. so just a little bit. Just We got here because um, I'm a victim of child abuse, um, physical and um, molestation. And uh, I stayed quiet for a while. Um, I was forced a little bit to speak up, but in a good way. It was in eighth grade, a friend of mine, you know, uh, she, she just saw it in me and I, she already knew what was kind of going on and she took it upon herself to go to my eighth grade, our eighth grade teacher at, at the moment. And then I was taken to the nurse and everything and that, you know, but long story short, I did speak up and then um, even though I was very, very young, I raised my younger siblings um, while my mom worked all day and they mean they, they meant then and mean everything to me and um, as a child I was put in a car with my mother and uncle and they convinced me to change my story in order for him to not get in trouble because uh, obviously I guess they didn't believe me right because that would be my only reasoning now as an adult I guess they didn't believe me and they made me change my story uh, using the fact that if I didn't change my story, my younger siblings, which were this man's 
biological children, my younger brother and sister, they would hate me. They got me. They manipulated me. That was a way to get to me. To and that was it. That's all you had to say because I would do anything for them. Then, and you know, now it's a little different as adults because, you know, you got to be, you know, you, <laughs> you want to be out here doing stupid stuff that's on you, but I'm, a, you know. But you saying now that it's different, but you know that your your siblings would never put you in a in a predicament. Right? I would hope not. Okay. You know, but like I said, Jazz as adults, it's kind of like you know what I mean. Hold up now, because you know. But as, as, as when they were kids, I really in my head was like they're mine. I have to protect them because nobody's protecting me. So that was my mentality, and I didn't want them to hate me. So um, yeah, so then um, I was forced to live with this person. The molestation stopped, but the uh, physical abuse got worse. So I guess he was mad at me. And then eventually, he was always cheating on my mom or, or not doing what he was supposed to. He was not a provider. It was just, you know, so they ended up splitting because he would leave, come back, leave, come back. And um, eventually, he left. I forgot about that. Um, eventually, he left to California and uh, he was gone for a while and stuff. So when he came back, I was already an adult. So yeah that's what happened to me so uh i just vowed that as an adult i would be voice for other kids because nobody was a voice for me well i'm not gonna say nobody because my eighth grade teacher and the nurse did believe me they did do everything they had to do but at the point when i changed the story you know as professionals they couldn't really put their heart into it but i know they wish they could have so and how long so how long removed are you from that situation what do you mean like, like how how long ago how long did it take you to be like you know what this i need to speak up now so to speak up to to this intensity so i, I all right so before i never really spoke up like that it was maybe a selective few that knew and then whoever was my partner you know i, I obviously you have to confide in them because there's certain things that i don't like you know what I mean? Um, because they trigger me. So obviously I had to share some info. Um, but my husband now is who I shared the most with, but still not everything. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought a little because I went back. <laughs> we were saying how, how I literally, you know, see what I'm saying? Like uh -huh. I go back and I just, it starts see, messing yeah. with me. The wheel starts turning. Yeah. How long ago was I mean, so how long did it take you to get Yeah, to so um, to this intensity, it was last year, out of nowhere, I was on a retreat with my sister and my cousin, and my husband took it upon himself, because um, he's an artist. Uh, he, he is very great with writing and music and everything, and he took what he knew and turn, turned it into a song. And he said, uh, who's around you? I said, just me. Bianca Jasmine and he was like okay listen to this and if you and your sister are okay with it then I'll I'll release it so we heard it we were hot mess in the car <laughs> my sister instantly was like do it I was like no and it's been bothering me it's been bothering me because I've run into other people too and you know that I was like nah I gotta speak up you know, so and I do it more for my kids. Yeah. Who am I to tell them to speak up if I'm not? They also know my story, not in full detail, but you know. And you owe it to them just in the aspect of you're getting it out. And yes. mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yep. so yeah, that's what. It's just a combination of everything of why I wanted to be a childcare provider, why I always have other people's kids, why I always, you know, I just. It messes with me. It's like, okay, if I if I can't watch them, then somebody else will, and then maybe what something can. can yeah, like I said, it messes with me. So, but then you gotta watch it because there's people that take advantage of that. So there's a lot of people out here that, as much as they try to act like they're super mom or super dad, people really don't like their kids <laughs> and don't like being around their kids. 
But it's hard. <laughs> no, no. I know what you're saying. You're talking about like needing a break. It's okay with needing a break, you know, or you need help because you got to go to work or whatever. No, I've been, you know. People who really just harm. Listen, kids. no, they leave. They If I, I had to watch who I would. Cause I'm like, leave them with me. I don't care. Like, and then three days later, she'd be like, all right, when you come to get your kids? <laughs> like, I, no, I would just He's wonder. Because you know, the only time that I'm okay, obviously my kids have to go with their dad, and my other kids have to go with their mom, and I try my best to not be all crazy, and I, I don't call stalk or anything and stuff like that. But in my head, I be, I do. I start tweaking. It's like, all right, they're coming home this day, but you know. <laughs> So I don't understand I how some people could just leave their kids for days with <clears throat> other people. I like my kids. They get on my nerves. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nothing's perfect. They get on my nerves sometimes. But, but your like kids them. are your peace. Yeah, so. I, li I like being with them. Yeah. I, I really it. do. I, I mean, I don't, I don't. You get it. Right there. I get it. <laughs> yes. But yeah. yeah. So I guess my tragedy is what brought you here brought me to be the way i am yeah with kids and absolutely other people's that's, kids that's what it'll do it for some people it some will people. for some people it makes them bitter and and withdrawn and for some people it propels them and it makes them yeah um more vigilant so um you know Can you you that? work through the things that like you're like ah, i need to <clears throat> Yeah, I, I don't like that part, but for essentially the whole person, mm -hmm. it's made you more vigilant as a mother. Yeah, yeah, and we're here for that. A little psycho, but listen, I'd leave my kids here <laughs> for days, <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yep. <laughs> that damn autumn. <bottom. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> don't talk about my food. She's, going, oh. she's, she's. Transitioning. She's very she's much transitioning. transitioning, not for the better. Cause I like literally, I came in one day. I was like, "What did y'all do to her over the past?" I only did. I can't that remember time. the flip. What like, did, like, did y'all do? I was like, "Maybe she's teething," or and Jason was like, know. "Oh, she's not. She hasn't been feeling well." And I was like, "No, this, that, it's, this permanent. it's been permanent. <laughs> it has not changed. She still doesn't feel well." Apparently, <laughs> yeah. That's all right. right. But she's she's working through some things. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I mean, I know how. To, I don't know how to deal with her, but I, I I can handle her. Yeah, put her to sleep every fifteen minutes. <laughs> so, um, Siobhan, your turn. So I came into this circle because of my experience with child abuse. I am a should I say survivor? I guess maybe a survivor. Yes. So my first child. Because what would have taken somebody else out, you did yep. not. Um, yes, you my survived. first child, who was born in 2003, um, spent a few days, maybe a week, with his dad and never came home. So I get a phone call from uh, family to come to, I live in Superville, they told me to come home, come to the hospital. I'm just sure morning. And I get to the hospital, a bunch of my family outside, I see his dad inside, um, he's crying and whatnot, and um, my brother takes me to a room, I go to, to this room, my stepdad's there, my brother, a couple other family members, um, the doctor tells me what the injuries were, and that he passed away. So, that was in 2007. Yes. I was in 2007, he was four. I had a two-year-old, my daughter was two at the time. And um, yeah, so we didn't know. I, initially, you know, I don't know what happened and I really, my mind wasn't on what happened. It's that I'm going through this now. Then um, the prosecutor's office comes to see me. They say, hey, you know, they can't release the body until his dad gives an interview. So I had to go see him tell him, you know, they're not going to release the body. I can't bury my son until you do this interview. So he agrees. They do the interview. A couple days later, they come and they tell us that they arrested him for um, child abuse. Well, not, it, it wasn't for child abuse. It, basically, that they did the interview. He admitted to hitting him 
for whatever reason. It wasn't until later we found out like what his interview or what he what he said in the interview was the reason. How um, long after that did you find out exactly what he said? I didn't find out until the trial. So the trial was after he had already been locked in up jail. Yeah, time. there was no, I, there was no, and I still don't really know because the story, not only did the story change, but also the injuries didn't match what his story was. So, you know, what the death certificate said and what the injuries were and what he said he did, it just didn't add up. So I still don't know exactly what happened. And I don't think that I'm really interested in finding out. Like, I don't think I need to know exactly what happened, like, at this point, anyway. But, yeah, so... That's where we are. So that happened in 2007, and you've raised your daughter since, and you have two new babies, and mm -hmm. yeah, they so cute. I have all girls now, <laughs> no boys, and that might be for the better. Um, somebody take these kids. Don't do that. <laughs> well, who wants these kids? <laughs> Actually, my oldest is leaving me. My exactly. oldest and is you're going, going to, to college. college. Look, exactly. Two months, and I don't know what I'm going to do for so many reasons. Um, because she really is a fun kid. And then I have these two new babies, uh, a one-year-old and a three-year-old, who mm. it's just not like having Kimura. <laughs> they're not Kimura. So. Because they're not 17. <laughs> Still, Kamora, I guess Avery could be. Avery's good. Autumn, someone else can have her. Avery's good to you. Avery's good to me. She is. <laughs> Avery's good to her. <laughs> <laughs> Only her. <laughs> That's my baby. <laughs> Autumn, she hasn't gotten it yet. Autumn, she's, like I said, she's working through school. Yeah. Man. Don't talk about my boo <laughs> <laughs> I've got faith in Autumn, all right? So, um, if you've missed the last two episodes, I would definitely definitely say go back and listen because we've just done a recap, but those two episodes were jam-packed with meat. Way more. Way, way more detail about their stories, um, the male perspective of their stories. Last week we had Sharon's brother who remembers that situation and how he, his perspective and how he dealt with it. Um, which was so interesting. There were so many details that, like, details that, that I would night. have never remembered, or I, not that I would never have remembered, because trauma does that sometimes. You just push things out of your mind. Or, like, my mind just wasn't as vigilant that night mm -hmm. as, you know, to, to be able to remember all the details. But it was our first time, literally, and since then, like, we've, no, we haven't really talked about it much since then, but that was the, after the first episode, leading to the second episode was our first time really talking about it jointly or together at all. Like I, I talk to my sister about it all the time, maybe not so much other family members, but my brother has, ne we've never, like we we're, we're just as close as me and my sister, but we, we don't, it's like a sensitive topic, I guess. And he said he was, he was kind of like, you know, like she knew if she needed to talk, Oh, definitely. but it was just him knowing your, your personality and his personality. It was like this, we don't need to talk that, about it. We don't need to talk about it. So. so yeah, that was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. So um, again, go back and look at those episodes. Um, and then Angie came to me with um, another another episode, and here we are. So Angie's yeah. Back. So the actually one of my. Um, points of doing this was uh to make people <clears throat> kind of see like they're not the only ones mm -hmm. um it, it, to spark the conversation not just to spark the conversation but to get other people to yeah. get comfortable in telling yeah. their stories yeah and feeling like there is a community there is support yep there is, you know, someone we can listen, even if not to, even if your situation isn't exactly what we've been through, mm -hmm. we can still listen and then we can still have a discussion and, and, you know, if it's just an ear you need, we're there. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I was actually, um, it was a, a, probably like two, two years ago, this particular person, um, did a post and I thought she was. 
I'm, I'm about to say. <laughs> she was brave for doing that. She was fucking she brave. She got to do what I never got to do because the person that did it to me passed away. So, and I was touched. Um, I know her. Like, we, we're not, like, we don't partake in each other's lives. But she is, like, best friends with a good friend of mine. And it just, it, it was like, wow. So I messaged her then, and I told her she was brave for that. And to what anybody else had to say. And mind you, there was so I look at the post, people, and she had a hundred and something shares. And if she post. got a little bit of a roller coaster where people were like, good for you, but then I also know there was a lot of people that were trying to tell her like, girl, take that down. Why are you doing girl, that? I want people in your business. Whole time. Whole time. You don't know what I'm going through. Not only you don't know what I'm going through, but what is, what is how I have to get to my how next level? How does that affect how you? How does that affect you? And why does me telling my, like, why does yep. me telling my story trigger I you? I could care less about y'all being in my business if I if I this is what I feel like I need to do to get better. Mm -hmm. Like exactly. you want me to die in my business. Exactly. You you want me to sit with this struggle and you know what I mean keep quiet for what? Yeah. For what? Because essentially, I want to make sure it's not done to somebody else. Yeah. I need to speak up for me mm -hmm. and forget if you don't understand that. Don't get me hyped, okay? Because yeah, that's all. I was saying it. I was already like, <laughs> but to get to it, she after the first episode, she reached out to me too because my episode, our episode, touched her as well, and I said, you know what? Because she also said she was like, this is something that I would want to do. So I was like, you know what? Let me talk because it ain't my show. So I was like, let me. I was like, you know what? It wasn't even supposed to be like this. It wasn't supposed to be like episode one, two, three. It but wasn't. Guess what? It wasn't. Guess what? It is. And I talked to her. Of course, she's like, let's do it. So yeah, y'all about to hear another um, real, real story, and. I swear, like, I just, like I said, you touched me by yours. I thought yours was worse than mine. And then she's like, no, you too. This is how I feel about this person. Because I couldn't imagine. Mm -hmm. Literally. I think like, in everybody's story, no matter, like, how how much you can relate, it, it you still are like, oh, my God, I cannot believe that happened. Or, oh, my God, like, I don't know what I would do if I were in that position. Like, it's... Yeah. It's there's never a way where you you're like oh man like such as life or yeah that happens unless you're certain people but yeah every time I hear a story it, it I don't know just something about Listen, everybody's the, story just the makes way me like that, oh my god that happened the way but again I have to go back to the <clears throat> level of just the level of growth and and um, relief that I know Angie feels because mm -hmm. when we first had the conversation. Her entire countenance was like, you know what I mean, reliving these moments. Mm -hmm. But now it's her being able to like kind of this happened. <laughs> kinda, this is kinda, what I went through. You know, yeah, this is what I've gone through, and this is these are the steps that I'm taking. And then for Siobhan, like when she tells her the first this, mind you, the first time I heard her tell the story from start to finish, me knowing what her experience was, but actually having the conversation with her, I was just like, how are you? <laughs> How are you not melting? Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like, because you melt that first few years. Yeah. Now it's just like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Now it's just like, I just, it better not happen to nobody else type thing. Understood. Andy. Understood. Yeah, so we tell these stories not just because we want to just have something to talk about. We tell these stories for the, mm -hmm. for the survivors, the growth for the overcomers um and to spark a conversation for people to kind of think ahead as well yes you know what i mean if you you know for the mother who has a boyfriend and she's having a hard time finding child care it's just all kinds of think, stuff fit, like you know at least just even if you even if she can't a, take you a, right she will give you resources yeah. and and she will definitely she's gonna point you in her she's, direction you're gonna yeah. get some child care you're gonna get some some good help yeah, so, so um, this is how we, we this is how we promote.
community empowerment and, and pushing people forward just by giving them um, resources and giving them a, a platform to be heard. So, yeah. we're going to go ahead and bring in... Angelina. Look, I'm like... If I, I don't want to... Huh? If she wants, she could come sit with you if she wants. If she wants, yeah. It's up to her. You want to come down? Yeah, that's why we moved all the way over here. You sit next to Kristen. Oh, come, come over here. here. We're all for support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're yeah. all for support. Yeah. 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 This is for you. This is cute. So, look, I'm going to have you tell us your name because... I don't want to mess it up. Well, Neka? Neka. 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 Okay. Is that short for Muñeca? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, I didn't put that together. Yeah. 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 I did not put that together. A little bit. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. What you mean? Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Neka re reached out to Angie. You know, because she has been through some things um, as a child and she was brave enough to um, kind of put it out there within the past couple of years because her offender is still on the loose. And um, what I wanted to do really was to, for us to get to know her first because she's bigger than what she's been through. Yeah. And she's, um, she's more than just, because that's what people will do. They will try to pin on you the one your thing, experience, your is, one your experience, past. and you know belittle all the all the oh, greatness that is you, right? So tell us three things about you now, your who you are, what your character is, you know. Let us know something about you. Yeah. It's not about me. What is not to love about me? Ooh, like, say that. Say that. <laughs> I love me. I just I'm an outgoing person. I love to have fun and I'm a giver. I'm a lover. All of the above. And one thing it is, like, you know, I'm big on woman empowerment, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So that was one of the main things why I'm here today. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a mommy? I am a mommy. <laughs> and then I'm a grandma. So yeah. First time grandma. You look 12. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. You know, I shake my ass for living psych. No. Just yeah. <laughs> let me stop playing. That was a trauma response. Yeah, yeah, that was. Oh, Jesus, what? Let me have another set. <laughs> so, um, okay, so, you know, you're a big personality, a, you know, a lover of people, a mom, a working woman, all the, all the things. So these are all the, the beautiful things that make this young lady who she is. Now, if we go back to your childhood, um, what was your relationship with your offender? Uh, I wouldn't even call him a stepdad. Was it married? Um, he was just my mom's boyfriend. Okay, and your mother's boyfriend. And how old were you? Eight years old. Okay, so you were eight, and was your mother around at the time? Yes. When it when it occurred, or was she around? Like you know, was she it, when it occurred? Was she in the vicinity? No. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, my mother had to leave town and she left me home and I was just laying in the bed one day, you know, with my legs up, just, you know, on my stomach with my legs up, doing my homework on the bed, you know, my little eight year old self. Um, just laying there minding my business, doing my homework and the next thing you know, I just seen him come to the door like with this face on him and I'm looking at him like, what's wrong with you? He just stood there for like a second or two, like I don't even want to say, but he had the, like the devil's look on his face. Like that ish was crazy. Like that image still in my mind is like, whoa, like what is going on? In my mind, I'm like, what is going, what's wrong with him? Like, why is he looking at me like that? Is I'm, am I in trouble? Like what happened? And then next thing you know, he just picked me up off the bed and put his hands over my mouth and took me to my mother's bed and did whatever he wanted to do with me. And um, did it repeatedly over and over. 
um, that wasn't just the first time, but that was just the, the first time and how, how it happened. Like the more so time that I kind of remember because it was like the first time because after I became numb to it, um, it just was like, okay, this is what I got to deal with. Nobody's around. Where's my peoples? Where's somebody that's supposed to be saving me? So I just basically ate it up and was numb to it. So that's that was that was how it happened. And uh, then did he live with y'all? Yes. Okay. He so it was just the three of you in the house, or did you were there? It was my niece. I don't. I think my niece and my nephew where they weren't living at there at the time. My mom had went to get them, I believe, and um, she went to go get them. That's when the first time it happened i kind of like you know i don't know if you know what i mean like you get you black out sometimes mm -hmm. so yes. like i remember that one time but then after a while like i said i became numb to it so it was like everything was, that's, everything that's was like, like a blur you dealing with it it's kind of like um i do that sometimes it's a like, trauma response yeah, yeah. so it was sometimes like, as i talk yeah then i start remembering like, things yeah then mm -hmm. i remember exactly. things happened together mm -hmm. and kind of like as i grew older i tried to like forget it and just mm -hmm. like lock it out my mind and like go numb to it to it so yeah and then that happened and I never you know talked to nobody because he threatened to kill me my mother and anyone that I've told so I believe that I was eight years old I was like what, what did I know better I was like this man's big as hell he's doing this to me so many times and nobody's helping me so I'm like yeah there's no way I'm gonna get out of it I'm like I just gotta deal with it and I dealt with it for the several times that it happened and then I just shut myself off from the world. Um, stopped going to school. I was hiding in backyards and people's porches. And this is at, at, in the second grade? Yes, second grade. So I had friends that were in school with me. And then they realized, they were like, where did you go? You disappeared. Like, you stopped and then you came back. Wow. So it was like, for like maybe a year, I gypped school for like a whole year. And just was dealing with that on my own to myself at eight, at eight years old. So, yeah, that's pretty much like and what that, happened. Like your mother never, like the the school never said, huh, your daughter hasn't been here, and your mother kind of like yeah, fired. like she. Called I think me. that was before we started getting those phone calls. Yeah, I like, phone calls when truancy, I came. Truancy, 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 truancy started. Yeah, back then. This is how it started. It was different back then. Yeah, yeah. We didn't crazy. get those phone she calls. She called me one time, and I ran the other way. She was like, "You little, you're not in school." And I'm like, oh shit, she caught me. Now I gotta find another hiding spot. Cause that's, I just felt like I couldn't face the world. Cause I couldn't express what I was feeling. So it was like, it was weird. Like I was so like- So you just was like, I can't even deal with people. No. And and that was tough. Cause I was like, what the F is going on? I couldn't even process it. I didn't even know what was going on. I was like, what did he do? I didn't even know what sex was. Like I was confused. So. Yeah, I couldn't process it. I just couldn't process it. So I was like, school is not what ran out for me. I couldn't even face the pe people, like other kids my age, because I felt like I was already, I don't know. I felt like I was numb, yet I, I couldn't talk to nobody because I like put me in this understand. predicament. Mm -hmm. And then I felt like if I go to school, then I'm gonna tell something or somebody's gonna realize, like I was just all over the, and I was eight. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I really didn't know what was going on, so. How long did this go on? Oh, for me, it felt like it was forever. Of course. Yeah. Like forever. For real, for real. Um, it probably happened like five times. It, yeah, probably like five times. Five times over the course of how long? Probably a couple months until then he finally left. Like, you know, because he was, he was cheating on my mother. So I knew that, you know, his behavior, I mean, I don't know what his behavior was. So he was already out the door, almost out the door. I think it's all like when you um, when you say that his face was like a like I when the way that you describe it, I see a possession like a you know what I mean? Yes. Like, if he's no longer him, yeah. he's been overtaken by something else. I want to fight and like it, for real because that means that he goes off an of impulse. That means you're disgust. You're beyond disgusting. Mm -hmm. That means that a little like, girl laying on her stomach, little girl, turned, turned you on, on to some the kind of point way. where mm -hmm. you just didn't say nothing of it. You just attacked her. So that means right. you did that shit before, and you've done Probably it after. Again. Mm -hmm. Definitely had 
that too. Like, I never thought of it like that. But then, no, he went off impulse. impulse. He can't even control. Like, those people are dangerous. They gotta be out there doing it to someone else. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, did you has did you ever report it? Like, I, I, I guess not uh, to the police. I couldn't. My sister. I didn't even tell my mom. I didn't tell anybody. And then when I finally spoke, it was already late. I already done had her. I done started wilding out, running in the streets, mm -hmm. looking for love in the wrong places. Um, just doing ish, you know what I mean? And then I ended up pregnant with my daughter. And then my sister brought up the conversation one time. Like, she noticed, like, I would flinch or, like, I would just put my head down or, like, not say a word. And then she was like, let me ask you a question. Like, did he do anything to you? Around him, you would be like that. Yeah. She noticed, or if it, not even around him, if his name was mentioned, mm -hmm. I would like just flinch or probably not even, I would freeze and maybe my whole face would just, mm -hmm. you can just tell. Mm -hmm. So that's when she asked me that question. I was like, I froze for a second and then I started crying and I just told her, yeah. And how old were you then? Uh, maybe like 14. I had her, like maybe four, yeah, 14, because she, I had her at 14. What was your sister's response? Like, how did she take it? she was hurt she was hurt like she was just upset she was mad like she wanted revenge right then and there mm -hmm. you know at that point we didn't really know much like where his, where his whereabouts, whereabouts. and you know it was too late this is like you know you you know had a baby you know life moves on life move on so it's like you know, let's not try to dwell on it but she was mad because she was like you should have told me i wish you would have told me so i was like listen i ain't tell nobody i ain't even tell my best friend that i had since kindergarten she didn't even know, so it was tough. I kept it in, and that was crazy. Hard. To take yeah. hard. Hard as hell to keep that for in. For years. For years? Because, oh, my God. Because then all the, all the little things that remind you of or all the little things that are triggering, then you're kind of like, <laughs> I, don't, I still don't know what to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm still, like, I'm, I get triggers, and I'm just like, the only thing now that I realize is, that I can talk about it yeah. more. And then I'm getting to know where I'm at a place. I just want peace and I just want to work on me. That's it. And that's why I reached out to Angie because I was just like, nah. And not only that, I know a couple people that go through it and it's just, they, they're you afraid to talk and you say it. You'd be surprised. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is another thing that we need to tap into. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised at how often it's, especially generations before us, how often it's happened in black and brown households and nobody says anything. Mm -hmm. yep. Like, you our, just yeah. sleep it under the rug or what goes on in, on in this house, stays in, in his this house, house, and you never really get him some help. Okay? Get him help. Let's start there. Because you're, and you know stop what I mean? this intergenerational and trauma. Exactly, right. because then it, if we don't say anything, then it, it's, you don't know what his, his, children are going through you don't know what you know it's what like, I mean? all these things it, it, yes. exactly that's the pathology continues mm -hmm. and it, it really is it, it's like time out for um you know just not having these conversations and and not, and have, not having these and holding them accountable and having these conversations with because they, after they the trauma after having these conversations after we've already been affected by it. Yep. So instead of not, dealing not with that, it before. They, they talk, to, they talk to, to girls about oh, definitely. their virginity. But about this is why. All these things. But the conversation As a result boys of, is so much different. this is what boys can do. This is what can happen. Right. But why don't you so, have that discussion with so don't So don't sit on anybody's lap Shit. and don't dress like that. And don't do these things. And don't do any of these things that right. would make a man want to. What? You that would make a... Normal man that. become a predator? Right. I'm grown confused. ass man. Right. I'm confused. No. That would make a normal man become a predator? I, that it don't. Now you put fear in a kid. Like why? No, they didn't you even just understand. shouldn't have your kids around these. Right. People. Or why? Don't, like, but sometimes no, we're not going to deal with the fact that they put on a face too. That yeah. Think, but, but the crazy part or, about or it, some, some people too know, too like, oh yeah, that's the one we will but 90% right. of yeah. these offenders are people close to the trust. Yeah. So you're yeah. teaching yeah. them not to trust people before they even know what no. trust is. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to be people that are too. going to be around them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're not having a conversation with him about why he has these urges. Yeah. You're not having a conversation with him about how he should actually handle his siblings, his cousins, his, th you know what I mean? His, like, 
we don't have the conversations with girls yeah yeah, like we just we put all the weight on the girl about how she should carry herself how she should dress it around like this right right right. mm -hmm. because i feel weird you're putting all the weight on the child of how a man should act Mm -hmm. yeah like let's, you know what I mean, and I'm not. I'm saying that not to say that we shouldn't be cautious or that we shouldn't. But it's just, it's just, a weird, it's just the the, the weird, conversation should yes. be a little more level, because even into relationships, we put all the weight on how the woman should, and it's like the conversations really should be a little more level. Mm-hmm. That's what it comes down to, and it starts young. The conversations you have with your sons should look a little more like the conversations you have with your yep. daughters. You know, they, they teach like us to, boys too. They yeah. teach us to to carry all this and then the boys is just like, well, just don't get nobody pregnant. Yeah, but That's it. go over his urges with him. That's <laughs> it. Go, go over his urges. Go over his mm-hmm. discipline. Mm-hmm. And what a healthy urge right. looks like. Yep. What healthy what sexuality should look like. Yeah. You know, appropriate ages, appropriate freaking like, you know, you're not watching porn at a certain age or you know, like there's just so much to it and I'm not a male, so I don't know exactly what your urges look like. But there has to be some kind of way to teach them what sex how sexuality progresses and what a healthy progression looks like. Mm -hmm. Because this ain't it. And that, that's a little bit of the conversation that we had yesterday about how people are not as emotionally um, intelligent as they should be. So there are more people around us that are sick than are well. Mm-hmm. And what it does is the same way that they don't, m- most people don't know how to um, verbalize and how to deal with their emotion and, and be able to put a name to it. It's the same thing as their... Like, if you, prime example, not to, you know, um, put the men out there, but most, most men, if you ask them what their love language is, they think it's physical touch. Right. And it's, it's because you don't, you have, you're don't not know emotionally not, right. how that is. What it how looks to, like. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just because you, you haven't matured <laughs> that past sex. Right. That's it. That's right. right. So physical touch only means sex. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean? So we're not going to get on into that, but, um. Again, we want to. I want to commend you for your bravery, um, and your bravery in in being able to do it with your child sitting next to you is big. Ugh. Because she knows since <laughs> she, she knows since she was eight. Then I tell y'all, eight was my favorite number. Yeah. Right? <laughs> she knows since she was eight. The breakdown. Listen, happened. let me save my sisters in the chat. Eight is new beginning, right? New beginning. Ronnie, where you at? I, be, I believe oh, because on. seven is completion, eight is new beginning. From a biblical standpoint, I just infinity. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite number since I was little because it's literally Speaking of the, the infinity. chat, Jasmine says, "Stop protecting the abusers to keep and mm-hmm. by keeping quiet." Mm-hmm. Yep. Erica said, "Release and find your peace." Mm-hmm. And Amen. Joe said, "You know, Amen, there's sister. no such thing as worse. I guess we all go through. You know, bad is bad, no matter how you put it." Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you, Erica. She said, "Everyone looks beautiful." Trauma will give you memory lapses, yes. Yeah. And not even just memory lapses, but it'll also make anything that happened during that time period, it may not have been directly correlated with no. that instance. No, it could be But you probably for, have forgotten a lot of your mm-hmm. second Things. grade year. Right, yeah. Because oh, you were going yeah. through a traumatic experience. I, I forgot a whole lot of my years, yeah. like after that. Forgot it, it, it probably I went numb. dictated how it went. I was numb, yeah. I was numb yeah. for years. I didn't feel anything. I just wowed out after. It was like, well, this is what I was introduced to, you know. Effing and, you know, out there looking for love in the wrong places. And, mm-hmm. and you know, man, sure. nothing wrong with that. I mean, today, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm saying, no regret. back it, in my day, there's regret. That, that, that was my coping mechanism. mechanism. Yeah. You didn't and it's big that you're able to look back and yeah. say that that's what. Yeah, that I learned from that. Too. Right, I learned from that. That definitely wasn't cool. It wasn't it. But it happened. Yeah. And I went numb, and, and I, that was something that I guess it, I, I wouldn't even say it felt good. Because, like you said, men, that's how men deal with it. I think that's what I was doing. Just. Just because, it was just I was just doing yeah. it to deal with it to kind of like I don't know to fulfill the need yeah. a, a void that was there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So maybe that's what it was. But um, so that happened when you were eight, and that that started, you know, um, a tough time. Now, when you first you told your sister at fourteen, what was the first time you had a conversation with your parents? Um, I can't even remember if I had a conversation with my parents. Really, like a sit down, nothing like that. No. I just basically, I think what happened was, was word of mouth. My mother, I mean, my sister, which is like a mother, second mother to me, she probably, I think she, what she did went and back and said something. And then I think that's when I was approached from my mom. I can't remember. It was like, but it was basically like, why didn't you say something? The same thing I said, I was scared. This man threatened to kill me. He said, I'll kill you if you say anything. So I believed it. I was eight years old. And every time it happened to me, like I said, nobody was that? around. Nobody was around. So. Now, do you think your mother knew at all? Um, I can't even answer that because I don't know. But it was mostly like happening while she left you at home. Yes. Right? She'd be at work or she left out of town. So, no, I don't know if she, if she knew. If, yeah. Like, you know, because, no, she never mentioned it to me. Now, was she like, what was your relationship with her like? Was she motherly? Was she a nurturing mom, or was it already kind of? Mm, I love my mom to death. I was gonna say that. <laughs> yeah, but um, this is this I is had the, the hard, hard part. That. This is the hard part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, no, I mean she worked all the time, so I was left home. I was left home alone. She was working all day, night, sleep all day, night, and I basically had to care for myself. Mm -hmm. Besides her, she would cook, you know, but other than that, it was like, I'm on my own. Mm -hmm. How I felt the entire time it was happening, I'm on my own. Mm -hmm. So that's how I felt. Um, so, no, I wouldn't say, like, I, it wasn't the lovey-dovey, the I love you, I never got that, you know, so that's why I be giving it to my kids, like, I be... I love you. I make sure I tell them I love you and I give them hugs and stuff like that because it's something I never had. So I had to pass it on and break that chain. Mm -hmm. um, so, you yeah, know, no relationship, no bond, nothing. Just had to get through life and just kind of figure it out on your own. Figure it out on my own. Now, with her, do you know what her relationship with her mother was like? It was nothing really. Like I said, she had a terrible past, and that's what gets me here today because I'm able to be like, okay. She didn't have it as much, you know, so I can't, like, quite... I'm not saying blame her or whatever. Like, yeah, when I was younger or still maybe a couple years ago. But now it's like, all right, she, you know, she didn't have a great past herself. She didn't have a motherly mother there, really. So I can't expect something that never she was... Didn't know. She didn't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... That, look, in our own family, that's one thing I've come to realize is there's so many things that, like, that's just how they were taught. Yeah. Like, or, or that's what they picked up from, yeah. right. you know what I mean, their... From the way they were raised. It's yeah. literally, and that is exactly what intergenerational trauma is, or looks like. It's, you know, it's passed down even innately, just... You know, I raise you the way I, the best way the I best know how way. to raise, yeah. and these are kind of how these things sneak through the cracks. And and then becoming a mother, then you just realize as you get older, like this, this don't come with a manual. I mean, you like you literally, literally don't. You just, just learn the best you, you can. Doing the best you can, and that's. Yeah. I I get it. She probably did the best she could. I you know. thought that for a long time until I actually became a mom. Became a mom. Yeah, I used to be angry and you know, whatever. Then I became a mom. I mean, like, no, I did become a mom. And then I thought, like, how could you? And how? Could yeah, you? because and it's how like, could you, how could you? Could you ever man see yourself? See doing yourself this. if she came to right. you. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like, I can't see myself not doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If one of right, my kids right, right, or right. one of my nieces, nephew, any kid, come to me and and see, I, but just, I think it, I it also has a lot to jail. do though with. There, yes. where Girl, they were. In jail. Yeah, but but I mean, <laughs> you work. know, her mom, both of your moms had to work. They, I mean, they put working before their kids, so that kind of opened the door for a lot of these things to happen. We don't have to do that now, like mm -hmm. uh, you know, between daycares and just you know, 
I don't know, there's a lot, we're afforded a lot now that they weren't afforded then. Not to make an excuse for them, because it's not right. an excuse mm-hmm. for them. But you know, the generation. But they, yeah, it was different. Like, they just left was kids with anyone, ours. yes. Yeah, not even just leave, leave just the, the kids with the uncles. Just, the, look, the not even just leave the kids. Just, just leave the just, kids. Just, just leave the kids. Just <laughs> be doing stuff. Like, like now so. we know the dangers in the world. We now we know there's we, like we used to, me and my brother used to be at the shopping center. Like, I remember when we used to go walk in the Kmart getting paint. Listen, for my no mother, reason, my for mother the that wasn't ours. <laughs> but in all fairness, she couldn't come outside, yell, and, and we, we could hear her. Right <laughs> we could, like, we could hear right her. Here. But it was, yeah, yeah it, I mean, it's times are different. Times are that different. Makes a, yeah. That makes that influences things a lot as well as just you know like evolving like you know now we know or we can see things a little bit differently we see like you know this is how she raised me i don't want to do this for, with my kids right. or and i don't want to be that kind of person that's the key kids. point is and that's that for be, like, like, i drilled because, that in my head that's what i drilled in my head like all right i'm not gonna do this this is not what i want to be right, right, right. to the point like i became ocd because it was yeah. like i try to be like so not perfect but like Better. No, 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 just better, 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 yeah, better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was like to and get that, that out my mind. That's, that's what the I part, would do. That's the the key part is that Angie's like I'm thinking like I would never, but the difference between the difference between us or you know what I mean, you as a mother and your mother as a mother is again most people around you are not well. Most people around you don't live intentionally. Mm-hmm. A lot of people. Like I said yesterday, somebody was like, yo, you know, people just be doing stuff, right? And I was like, mm. But what he was saying was, people do just be doing stuff. Most people don't live intentionally. Most people don't live, <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> don't make me look like the Alki. <laughs> Oh, Sean. Just blame it on the food. Just say it was good with the food. <laughs> it's fruit, it's fruit water. water. Yeah. Real good. Yep, fruit water. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, most people just be doing stuff. So you can't. The the difference is what might propel you to be better. Maybe. Yes, because some people can take it the opposite direction and shut down. Literally yeah. shut down. You know, and you hear it. You hear stories about people who have been through some kind of traumas, and you know they can't function. I remember, not off topic, but off topic, um, when my cousin went through the same thing when she had lost a child and i literally you know you know i, o- I only had jordan at the time i believe but i was thinking to myself like I, I would be that person that sits at a window in a rocking chair and just looks out a window if something ever happened to my kid like that's how i felt at the time and then to go through it things kind of you know it, it went differently but i could imagine being that person being that person that just shuts down and cannot function without, you know, knowing that I went through this, you know, like, so I don't know what it takes for a person to, you know, make it to the other side or to, to change things. I don't know. But thank God, Michael's standing right there. Because <laughs> 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 no, I kept going. I went like this to him. I'm like. <laughs> he just in there looking. So since she said it, I'm like, oh, what was <laughs> I was trying to not answer. Why are we coming up here like? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Bobby's coming back. My next go ahead, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, it was it was an experience. Yeah, it was very traumatic. Um, you know, I mean, I don't want to be like oh, that. Bruce. Listen, every time we come here, you get hammered. He's like, all these stuck. beautiful women, what's going stuck. on here? Like, <laughs> get past everybody right else. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, God. So, yeah. Um, I had I had other questions. Um, your conversation with your father, what was like that like? Oh, he was angry. Ooh, he was angry. And how, how old were you at the time? About the same. I think that's around the same time because everybody, uh, I guess my sister just probably said something or whatever the case may be. And um, So that would have been around the time you told your sister too? Yeah, I believe my sister went and told like and You were like 14, 15 yeah. and she was like, hey y'all. Um, yeah, y'all know like this. 
guy did this to her or whatever. I don't even know. I didn't even never asked her like, well, how did everybody know? But I think she she was like, I told them like, like she even told my uncles and them, and they were like, so everybody was so angry at me. And I was like. But he said he was gonna kill me. I believed it. Like I really believed they it. They were angry at you. Like that was everybody's response. Like, but they were. I think they were angry, not at me, but they were like angry aggressive. The they was very angry. aggressive when they were talking to me, like mad. And I was just like, oh god, I'm like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. um, that's what happened. But he told me he was gonna kill me, and I believe that shit. That shit was scary. At eight years and old. And to consider, yeah, at eight years old. Eight years old. You can eight years old. At eight years old, you can believe it. Yeah, you know, we lie to our kids these days. I'm just saying. They believe it. So, listen. So, it happened. Yeah, that's what I'm going to kill me like, do it. I'm with you. And the look on his face. But think about what you believe. The look on that man's face. No, I get it. I get it. It's about what he made me do. I believed it. If he made the thing. Things that he made me yeah. do the the way yeah. he had that devil look that yeah. that freaking and look not for on his nothing, face like not for nothing, he was a the way that you're, you you talk about this the scary this transition like, he may have you never know what. And that was enough. The face is enough for me to say. Yeah, I believe this nigga. I'm not about to do nothing. I'm not about to go out my way to be brave at all. Like, yes. I'm not about to be brave I was believing. I should have prayed. And I'm mad now at myself because I wasn't brave enough. No, don't be. No, don't be. No, don't be. Like, I want that mother effort to pay for what he did. Again, but far be it from an adult to. Like that's an adult that's situation. Manipulation. That's just an it's adult. Manip- it's, a, it's, it's manipulation. It's a way to manipulate but, you to do what he wants you to do. Right. And you, and, and you are supposed to. Like and literally, I don't know that I would ever. I know. I know. I would never be mad at my child for holding something back from me because they were scared. Because that is a, that's an emotion that you cannot yeah. take from someone. Yeah. You can't yeah. say. Don't be scared. Like you cannot tell someone how don't to feel, feel in that don't kind cry. of don't cry. Don't be scared. Like right. fear is an emotion that is subjective. But right. if, you know, like I this is how I feel. This is what frightens me. This is what I'm I'm entitled to feel. Right. But so if we I take it a step happen. further, what we'd want to do is create spaces where your child You feels can create like, that space, but you can't take that feeling. You you can't take the feeling, but you're but creating a space where your child feel it feels like Whatever the my fear, fear is, come to you. Right, my like, fear. Yes. You know what I mean? Whatever the fear is, is, I know that I have an advocate. I know that if, like, my mother, they'll share listen, that fear with me. My, my mother. Oh hell yes. <laughs> look, my and my mother is Angie. Maybe no. not as. Maybe not as violent. Maybe not as violent. But she's definitely a. I'm gonna address this. I'm going to confront. <laughs> listen, this. and you know, and whomever's children. Mm-hmm. Okay. Grandkids, great get grandkids. She's not scared to say the neighborhood's kids. I can't go spend the night no, no nowhere. But everybody in their mama. Like, yeah, yeah. Yes, house. my house. I was every my summer. Every summer. Every summer. Every summer. Somebody's kids is at my house. I'm the same way. The only time you ever see my kids spend the night at somebody's house is because their dad lets them. Yeah. Even though <laughs> I say over and over, don't. Right. So, whew, how old was your baby when you told her? Eight, eight, seven, eight. Yeah. Do you seven, remember eight. that conversation? Oh yeah, I do. I do. Still do to this day. Yeah. yeah. Because she was, she, she, she thought I was the, the, the worst mother, mean mother. Not I, the worst. I like <laughs> that. <laughs> you, 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 you know, know that your age, you know, but being at your age, you be like, yeah. she get on my nerves. I can't nerve. wait till I turn 18. She get on my nerves. Like, I gotta get away from her. She don't let me do nothing. <laughs> but, 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 you know, and I really didn't do a lot as a kid because I was too busy growing up fast because I was, not in that way, yeah. but growing up because mature i was growing up with her at the same time so we were teaching each other i was still learning how to be a daughter she was still learning how to be a mom Mm -hmm. and i had to take a lot of responsibility and then her trying to instill everything into me that her mother didn't teach her yeah and it's just like like, 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 you know you know i was a kid but i was I'm like, dang. I might have instilled some, <laughs> still some fear she in her. She did. Because even my it. friends are scared of her. I'm not even going to lie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are. But she was not, you know, a strict mom. But I knew I, as I got older, like in my teens, I was like, I know why my mom did that. Yeah. And now I understand. That's why we have the relationship we do. And I'm 24. 
and I tell anybody, my mom's my best friend. Mm -hmm. And all my friends are like, I wish I had that. My mom, like, you mom's really cool. Even yeah. though she can be mean sometimes, but she gives that motherly she love. Means well, like, yeah. she, she means, means well, though. She means well. But means yeah. well. Means, yeah, both. Yeah. <laughs> Straightforward. I'm not cutting. Yeah. Them. There's yeah. no cutting corner. No. So because the world's not going to... Nobody else is going to tell you. The way your mother tell you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way. And if goes. anybody's gonna give it to you raw, I'd rather be I'm me mean, than yeah, the right. world. Right. And I, I wanna disappoint that. you, or right. not disappoint you, because at the end of the day, the world don't care about you. you. Right. Yes. Because right. right. they're gonna break you. They're gonna try to break you. Right. I'm at least gonna like try to keep you from doing it, or keep you keep you keep Avoid, it from harming yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. She yeah. warned me about what was outside in that world. Yes. Like yeah. she told me around that age because. At that age, that's, that's when she went her. Yeah. So she was trying to prepare me, like always, I like know, make sure that I was understanding. Really like, cause I was a smart, I've always been a smart kid. So it's like Advanced. I didn't understand. I understood Advanced. what she told me her situation, and like it made me cry, cause I grew up feeling bad for my mom, because she, the love she gives me still to this day. I Which wish I that her yeah. child, like her, like, she could have got that yes. at that age. Yeah. I wish that she could feel the love that she gives me now. Yeah, yeah. I might cry. <laughs> <laughs> Able to feel someone's hurt, especially and you know, and as, a, as a child, mm -hmm. you and as you know, this is my mom, and I'm experienced, and, I, and I, I see what she went through. And you don't want just like a mom doesn't want their kid to go right. through something right. horrible, your kids don't want to see you hurt. Right. Like, I mean, yeah. no matter how you cut it, we don't want to see you hurt, they don't want to see you cry. Mm -hmm. And to and it kind of connects the dots. It's like, damn, I see. Like she's tough on me because of this, or or this changed her in that way mm -hmm. that she wants she wants to make sure, yeah. and it, it changes your relationship. It changes your right. relationship Not going only that, forward but for her to in be, so many ways. For her to be able to empathize with yes, an adult. With not just the adult. She was empathizing with the eight year old. Yes, yeah, that mom. too. Yep. You know what I mean? For her to, to say. I wish that you had you. Mm -hmm. yep. at, you know what I mean? Like, you had a yes. Yes. <laughs> you <laughs> have a job that you can make me cry. I'm watching the show. For real. No, but I always, you know, I always said that because it was hard. Like, you know, I'm like, she sat me down because she felt like I was very tired of talking. I'm like, okay. And she told me that. And I'm just like, yeah. as that being my grandmother in that situation, I could think, how? Like, could that ever, like, you know, ever happen? It happens. Like, I told her in the car on the way here, she had the worst anxiety at the room. I mean, Mom, <laughs> this is not just your story. There's a lot of people out there that yeah, won't speak up. Sure. Like, you will, mm -hmm. but they're, that's their story but they've as been well. Through and you're it. telling your story, but it's also that, that's you know, that's giving them a, the next a door. Person. That's yeah. them saying, that's you know, I can door talk for them to, you know, I can talk let about me, you know, let me open up now or let yes. me, you know, let me talk about it to mm -hmm. a therapist in front. It don't matter, but she, I'm telling her, like, tell your story because you told it to close family mm -hmm. and friends. You told it to me. And the fact that you told it to me as, that age at that age it, it stuck me forever yeah because those broken pieces of her and the trauma she went through she took pieces out of every mistake she made every thing she went through in life and instilled that to me and she didn't have a handbook in parents and god when she had me out she was 14 she was young she took all that hurt and pain and all the lessons and she put that into her being a mother but that into you and put that into me and now you are the way you are because mm -hmm. of that and i and have that a daughter and i have a daughter so now i'm in my mind like now i have to I make have sure to go two times mm -hmm. harder because this is what my mom told me this is what she taught me and that stuck with me mm -hmm. it always did so you broke the cycle you did. <laughs> you did. You did. That, that is an accomplishment in itself. You did it. Yeah. Just when your to oldest, bring awareness. Yeah, when your yeah. oldest <clears throat> is here to, to say what she's saying, and wow. now she's a new mommy, and she's like, I'm going to take that, and I'm going to... You, you mm -hmm. did that, mm -hmm. and you should be proud. Yeah, you know, a lot of people I tell her that. Prayers you for should breaking be very proud. I am. Curses <laughs> and traumas. Mm -hmm. But... Listen, I seen a post that said it ran, it ran, yeah. it was running in my family until it ran into me. Yeah, yeah I'm not the one. She was ready. I was like, you better be ready if somebody touched you like this or like that, like that. Yeah. Yeah. And she would be hard give a damn who it is. You sure? You can talk to me like she would be on oh, me like yeah. a hawk. Like, and that, so I mean, and that's another thing. She's that like, mom, we got to stop. But but she I bet you in my be, business. And you're like, gonna be that same way with your daughter. Right you're here. gonna be that same all way with your daughter. Like yeah. listen, oh, I know. talk I to me. Really say it. Really and the more you do it, she don't even. Like damn. But then I be thinking like like that too. So how could you be mad? But that gives them. That makes it. That's where that comfortability. Yeah. That's a word. I'm not sure. 
It and is. that trust comes in because you're already telling them, like, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Mm-hmm. So eventually they're like, damn it, I'm going to fucking talk to you. Like, yeah. what, what, I'm going to tell you exactly what the hell's going on. And as much as it, because I have this rule. I've always had this rule with my daughter. She has to give me 15 minutes when I get in the house. Because she will bombard me with oh. everything that has oh, happened throughout that the like day. Somebody I know. And I have to say, like, I don't want you to unload on me that quickly. Like, give me some time to unload my shit, and then you can give me yours. <laughs> but I cannot, I, I swear to God, I cannot take, I, I love the fact that we have that open relationship and that we can have those conversations. With your 17-year-old. Yes, because that's I feel so like cute. there's so and many. that's why you will miss her. That's like that, that is friend. exactly why I'm going to miss her. Because I'm going to miss these stories. I'm still living in high her. school. Okay? to know that they can come to you mm-hmm. or that you've created that space for them to be able to come to you right. and you know be able to feel secure and hoping that they're disclosing everything and that if something important comes up that they are going to come to you like that's 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 big that's huge um and even if they don't like to know that they have other people that they can yeah. talk to or to create those spaces with other people because mm-hmm. sometimes my, my daughter goes to my sister instead of coming to me for yep. some things um, and I'm and I'm okay with that because yeah. you know I yeah. do have the relationship with my sister where, where she knows like if she comes to you about something too big, you better come. You better you come to me. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's it. And, and, and I'm still gonna sit and say you told me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. we want to make sure that Look, she good. You you you're supposed to use mother's intuition. Yeah. 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 Hey. Listen, I'm the one that told me. No. What's going on anyway? Right. 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 And she always say like we run to each other. She be like, don't tell Courtney. And it was something happened. They always be like, but like it's. It's a good feeling to know that you know, like they're going to be, they're going to be open with you, and and that you're going to be in the know if something goes wrong, right. because they're so open, you know. And her friends are always like, "You told your mom, and you're telling your mom. Why are you always telling your mom? Tell me that I have a son. Tell me. My, well, I have all sons, but my oldest is like that. The the other ones are like following suit, but the oldest is like that. And people say, like, "Don't tell your mom." He's like, "Listen." <laughs> What? what? We, we had each other's location. Her friends yeah. like, you got your mom. Your mom knows where you at. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I remember yeah. last year prom. I kept, she wasn't home on time. So I kept like I locating her. Her location was coming up in the middle of freaking teen in like a, a, a pond or lake or something. And I was getting nervous. Like, oh my God, somebody dumped my baby body. Her phone is in the middle of the ocean or whatever the hell is in freaking teen. I'm calling, then I start calling her friends because of course I got her friends numbers too. Yeah. And I got one friend like, what's your other friend number? She was home in about 30 minutes, but she was on punishment after that shit. Why was she, did we find out why? She was in a casino. <laughs> they were in the casino. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. After in parties. In the middle of Brigantine? Uh, it, was come, it was Golden, I believe it was Golden Nugget, but it was coming up. Oh, in Brigantine. The, okay. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, on the boulevard. She's yeah. like, where yeah. was it? God. Made me nervous as shit. I stayed up. Okay? You she was a back row. I was <laughs> Number two, if I know about it, I can prevent something bad from happening. Yeah. If I know about it, I can make sure you're prepared for whatever consequence there may be. So tell me. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. Tell me so that I can I can make sure you're prepared because you don't know exactly what you you know what you want to do. That's you don't know thing. how to navigate that. That's another thing. The the not putting adult situations on children and expecting them to to really to know navigate the, those things when we have a hard time na- navigating those things. Um, you know what I mean. So if you tell me and I've created a space, then you have an advocate. Then you have my yes. Look, some of the stuff is like still as an adult, I still don't know how much, but you know, <laughs> we gonna figure it out together. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so those are the 
Those are the gems yeah, the spaces that, are... that we love that you've created. Yeah. You know, um, from of all my kids. My little one is seven. Mm -hmm. She's more advanced than she is. And she's always nosy. <laughs> I, she's I one of the ones that be at the door. I like, just think like it's the that she don't give me the 15 <laughs> minutes. So I had to bring it down to yeah. her maybe a week ago. Yeah. I did. I did. Yeah. I did. So I, let, had, that I, I had that conversation with her because she's very advanced. And now, how did that conversation go? Like, how does how does that look? Your trauma look like to explaining that to a seven year old. Girl. Do you explain it as this is why I'm overprotective? Yes. Or this is why yes. I'm my mommy that's is. How she explained it to yeah, her. that's how I explained mm -hmm. it to her. Like why I'm, I'm overprotective, or why sometimes you know mommy may seem a little irritated, or just maybe you know sometimes you know just just the way my character is, and you know I might go a little bit above or beyond, and she'd be like, oh my God, my mom's crazy. She's like, I'm crazy. <laughs> And I'm like, you know, and I broke it down to her, like, you know, mommy's not crazy. You know, mommy had a little tough, you know, childhood. And, you know, this is why mommy asks you these things, too. Because when she showers or whatever the case may be, you know, I make sure I tell her, like, nobody. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. No, I don't care who it is. Nobody. If it's not me, it doesn't happen. No. And it's not okay. Mm -hmm. That's not, mm -hmm. no. Because nobody mm -hmm. has to do all that. Mm -hmm. no. So, I broke it down to her and... She was excited for me to come here. She was happy, right? Mm -hmm. She was like, Mom, you got to get up. You're going to go to your podcast. You know, <laughs> you know, and I was just like, wow. Like, I, so I, the kind of support heavy. you get when It was you, heavy. Like, yeah, but then it's like she was much smooth with me. Like, wasn't, like, irritating me or nothing. I was just like, was this what I had to do all this time for her to understand? Because kids are curious. Yeah. yeah. And... Smart and, and most she's of one of them. She's an A and B and an A student. Like this little girl was when I tell you she's seven, going on seventeen. Yeah, she's a seventeen. <laughs> like and she said to herself, she's seventeen, she's 17 <laughs> and her seventh birthday. I said, this little girl, you know what? I'm gonna be bald by the time <laughs> she's <do> eighteen. <laughs> but a lot of and, and a lot of times your children will, and when you've gone through trauma, your children will end up being. You know, you right, know, and that's what I'm not us. trying to do because you know sometimes we may not be aware of sometimes of our behavior. What we're putting on, what them. we're putting on them, yeah. and it's not intentional. Okay, it's, right. So you want to make sure you're giving her the good pieces. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I want to give her the good piece, but I need to let her know and have a little insight of life yet why mommy's like this. Yeah, you know you. what I mean? Like yeah. so, it was like it was tough. It was tough. It was tough. It is good. But my son too. So I show my son because my son's a little, yo, he's more humble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little more humble. And, um, you know, he's a Libra. He's my humble baby boy. Um, so you have two girls and one boy. Yes. So my son's the middle one, and then my youngest is seven, which is the girl. So I have Aquarius, I have a Libra, and a Cancer. Her and astrology. When I tell you. <laughs> First of all, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Who's the cancer? Who's the cancer? The young one. How old is she? Seven. Oh, what's her birthday? I told you, July 1st. Are you in Courtney Cancers? I'm June 28th. Y'all so strong. I love y'all. Yeah, you're Y'all just be like, oh. I'll be like, damn. crazy. I'm crazy. No, really. That's the word. For real. That's the word. I'll be like, if you send it to me to help me, whatever it is. picture and I'm like because I was like in my head today I'm like he's like what what are you gonna do I'm like I'm gonna have a podcast I'm gonna talk about and I, and I didn't want to say like out loud so I was like here look at the picture and I let him read it and he was like mm. and I was like did I ever tell you he was like yeah and then my poor baby boy like he's just so quiet he's just so naive like he don't even like pictures he just it's to himself like he hates all that. Like he probably like, oh my god, my mom's crazy. You probably think I'm crazy, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Because he's so quiet. Oh, our, kids, our kids just think me crazy. It's yeah, just he's so quiet. And he just said, mm, okay. But that was it, right? Mm -hmm. He just like smirk, smile. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you do think, mom? Go ahead, mom. Whatever you need, mom. Yeah, the other one was I like, you mom. Back. <laughs> yeah, I support you. I'll be here playing my game when you get that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. Yeah, for real. Joanna said. 
Joe said, kids handle problems or issues a lot better than adults do. Way more understanding and giving of grace. Which is true. And that's because they really don't know. They really don't know the... I don't know that... It, I they know they that are more... They're understanding and giving of grace. It's, it's kind of the ignorance in them. The yeah, it's ignorance in like, like the true sense of the word. They just don't know. So, and things are... Which is actually a blessing. You would think... Like, you would wish... I would wish I had that kind of ignorance where I could just, you know, go through something and just be like, it, it's just... I'm going through it and I'm, I'm through it. We and think about things a lot more. We think about things a lot more and we've had more experience that's created more of a pile on mm -hmm. of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're, we're, now we're processing things like chess. Okay, so this is going to affect this. This is going to affect that. Kids are more kind of, they haven't had the time to, like we were talking about body language and, and hurting people's feelings and things like that. Kids, a lot of times, are more raw because they haven't figured out what they mean, what, what those, those things, thing, the, what those social cues are. Jasmine like that. has a question for oh, Nika. Yeah, <laughs> is your disgusting abuser local? Still local? Yes. Yeah, he has a business. So no, had the picture. Though, like two years. You right? said it to me. But are we dropping this name though? Yeah, we can drop the business oh, yeah. name. That's for sure. Wait, I, have to I don't know the name. Do you know how to? She's like, oh, you had the picture. I know his name. His government. Yeah, you never said the name yesterday. I never said My man has a Dominican shipping store. Oh, yeah, because you asked me, can I say it? I mean, I hate to say the name. Why? I don't know. It's like, ugh. It's I think it's like giving, it's like giving a name to... It, 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 most you people, like, Siobhan doesn't, you know... Yeah, I you don't. You want to text me? I got to do it, sis. Okay. I got to do it. I got to give it out. You can put it. You can even put it in the chat. Yeah, I can put it in the chat. Um, and you can tag the business. You can, no. you, and I would like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't let it be me. He is local. Mm -hmm. His name is Luis de los Santos. Mm -hmm. Um, he does have a van, which is creepy to me, and which is why Not I posted the Chester van. twice. Because I think that's creepy, right? It's, it's no way that what happened to me. I think that's mm -hmm. a little weird. Awesome so embarque. I don't know. Did y'all see oh. the post, right? I didn't. I don't I mean, think I did that. Um, Wait, don't say that if it's not. I deleted it. Oh, okay. We don't know if it's on that post. It's on the post. Yeah. I searched I, it I yesterday. So did you grab the picture? History. I say drop the van in the comments too, so yeah. everybody can know. Right. Las or Embarque Las Americas. I don't know. Yes, he is local. Mm -hmm. so. Very well. Um, you'll see them vans probably parked in front of Cosecha and Pleasantville. I see that like prior. So does he work for it or he owns it? I really don't know, but I know he lives on California Avenue in Atlantic City. That's the last address, and I've seen that van still. You know what? Have we ever, ever searched him up? Searched in the sex yeah, offenders. Because I wonder if anyone searched him under sex offenders. That would be crazy, but no. Yeah, I don't you know. never, you never know. Maybe someone. Yeah, maybe he is a sex offender. Maybe since you. I'm looking at But that. he would be still <laughs> here. We he would be, be locked up. No. no. If, he, sex, if you're a registered sex offender, you are you're, you're on this registry, and no matter where you move, they put you there so that yeah. other people can know that you're in their neighborhood. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So this is, now that you said that, should he be locked time? up? Let me explain something to you, which pisses me, me, off. Off. me off already. So um, a person can rape, molest, Violate, murder. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just saying the, the, the child abuse stuff, right? They could do all that and get less than, and they'll 10, get like years. a little slap on the wrist, maybe some probation, maybe a couple years or whatever. But there's somebody that's selling drugs, they want to smoke their boots and give them uh, 20, 30 years. That don't make no sense. That's a whole other. Now, what? Um, I had what's, this, that? what's the search for? Because I've done it before. I've Put What's in, the New Jersey Sex Offenders website? I've I've put it put Listen. in um a because what it'll do is you'll and put wait it in a, is that his real name? Luis. No, name? like for real, for real, because you know sometimes no, they that's use, his real government. Okay, that's his whole thing. The whole Ooh, thing. On there. The whole shebang bang. So, um, I'm sure someone here is um uncomfortable, and I. 
Y'all could get off now. Don't know what to do for you. Uh, (laughs) It is what it is. Sorry. I told you this was going to be an uncomfortable conversation. It's going to be one that you want to have with your children. It's going to be one that you want to think about. And if someone getting their um, their piece makes you uncomfortable, you should really look into that. You should really look into that. But um, so you've had the conversation with while there while we've got the search engine going. Um, it's funny that Siobhan was in my head though, because literally at the same time we were both like, but um, you've had. You've had the conversation with your your daughter. Um, now there was there was a there was a response from your mother. A couple of years ago, before she you know got into her dementia stage. Spanish names so hard. Um, I had because said it because I needed to get it off my chest, and I was like again, I was like I gotta get it off my chest because it was bugging me out, you know. Um, and I just was like. <clears throat> I was like, mom, like, I don't hate you, you know, it bothers me, it hurts me, and I just don't get why, you know, why it happened, yes. yeah. and, and, and et cetera, and she was like, well, it happened to me, too, and, and I was not. like, mm-hmm. okay, and then she just that left it at that, yeah, she started crying, and it became, well, you'd, be, you'd be surprised how many, a hurt thing, so, so do you think that that was her way of, relating or was that her way of getting around it or you know what I mean because she could have been saying that for multiple different reasons it yeah, to know. me it could have sounded like just to probably avoid having a conversation too because maybe it could have been tough on her to just know yeah. that I know for, but I, one thing I do know is she guilt she's guilty it does bother her it ate her up you know because so it's like now I'm okay to this day. Like now I'm, I'm like you know it's okay. I just have to enjoy the rest of the time I have here with her, even though it may not be what I wanted, you know. Yeah, yeah. But God make this happen, like you know. And you take care of your mother now. I take care of her, you know. She's modern stage of dementia, and. I prayed so many times and was like, God, if this is what you sent me here for, then just say it sometimes. I'll be like, because that sh- is just tough. Mm-hmm. That's just, like taking care of like three kids. Or yeah. parent a bond yeah. mm-hmm. that you never had. Mm-hmm. That's tough. It's, that's it's just, completely different. Because, because she has no clue what happened in the past. She's literally living day to day and you still have I'm to still relive, live back there live. sometimes. Yes. And, and as bad as you want to have those conversations and as bad as you want to hold her accountable, she's a different person right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she's a completely different person right now, and there's nothing, there's nothing that you would get out of those, that kind of conversation at this point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you'll never get the kind of resolve that you're that looking for. That I'm looking for. I'll never. I just have to make peace mm-hmm. with God and mm-hmm. just, you know, just mm-hmm. try to... And that's exactly what it is. That's what it is. It. And your blessings are coming from you turning that leaf and, and extending yeah. that olive branch and saying, I don't, not necessarily I don't blame you, but right. I'm still not going to do you right. like that. Right. Like, I'm not going to, I'm, I I'm still going to say yes. You're still you my know, mother. It took me some time to get there and get where I am today to understand yeah. that, like, okay, I can't keep dwelling on it, you know. Mm-hmm. Now I'm dwelling on the fact that she has this sickness and that's eating me up inside. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I got to let that other ish go and Focus on now because yeah. now it's happening and now it's you know it may be too late. Yeah. So it's like I gotta enjoy it. I yeah. gotta you know. Yep. Yeah. And I and like I said yesterday, I, I fully believe that as well. That yeah. you know that once once her time comes, you will have the like a, a internal a infinity different level piece. because we are we, yeah. we are supposed to honor our parents, parents. Right. And, right. and you know God, that's yeah. it's like and, that's my job. Yeah. And you know, yeah, I, I guess I was that. brought on this earth to do that to care for people, to love people, and, and maybe that's part be of a giver, giver. yeah, that's and that's part of, part of it, you know. That's and I can understand that now. I didn't understand of that, course. Back, back, back. yeah, because a lot of people I think that fight. Peace, I want to do all the crazy, shit. a lot of people think <laughs> that the only way that you'll get peace is by retribution, right. or that you'll get peace by uh, an apology, or right. because, but how many no. times have you gotten an apology that, that didn't fix it, or you know, how many times have you gotten, um, someone a 
acknowledge your pain and it's the, and it's still mess still with there. you. Yeah. Right. So your peace may just come from, you know, just being able to still work through it and take care of her and knowing that you, you regardless did of what, I did the best that I could. Yep. yep. And every day I say that, I'd be like, girl, you a champ. Even on days you I'm are. Like, you are. Yeah. Over there. You are. You are. Ooh. You are. That's Even a fact. days, and I'd be like, nobody can tell me nothing. That's it. At this point. Yeah. Nobody. And nobody. let me tell you something. Don't, don't change that about yourself. And don't let nobody else make you feel like you have to like no. tone it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that I definitely used to do. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to the Feeble sisters, my friends, Jamila and Denise. They definitely was on me. It was like, um, excuse me, I'm gonna need you to you are it. And they, you are it. Be no, it. they really because before be I was like, nah, so I don't want to sound like I'm all conceited. Or right, whatever. right. Like, yeah, like I'm just no, like I'm know. conceited. I got a reason. Like, <laughs> like, like no. Don't, and, don't and you're like, you know, Angie, Angie's like that. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Shimon. <laughs> like <laughs> look, <laughs> <Shimon> <laughs> she was like, no, right? That was my era. Oh my god, that was my era too. That's why I said. Something about a Remy song. Listen, yep. <laughs> Here she goes. Okay, Remy is my alter ego, actually. But um, yeah, it's you. you listen, can't nobody tell you nothing about you. You know about you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Can't nobody and tell you nothing about you. Your, no, don't but you know it inside. You just don't let it out. Yeah, and, yeah. and now that I let it out, the people. You attract are, those people that you, yeah, you, that you find the people. Exactly. You're trying. Yeah, you're trying. Exactly. And yeah. listen, um, that's something that I, I've also struggled with because people want, and I said the other day, stop looking for your, and trying to prove your value to people who can't count. Mm -hmm. Because people will, people who don't know they who they are will try to tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. Oh God! Right? Like mm -hmm. right literally, you know what I mean? And they'll make you think that you're too, you're too big, you do too much. And one thing I have come to the, I, I've settled in. It's always going to be too much. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with that. That's too much. That's it. First of all, it's, I'm too much. Look, I'm why, too much. That video, why you do so much? Why you do so little? Listen, right. like, I, that's just you ain't cool enough. You yeah, ain't like, yeah. catch up. And that's why you know you're comfortable. Yeah. Because those kind of people are the people that you keep in the back of your mind. Like, damn, I can't do it because this person because is going to exactly. I don't want them to think that I'm doing too much. Oh, I don't time. want you to become comfortable with yourself. And you're like, exactly. I don't fuck what they say. Right. Whole time. Because, they, gonna because talk, they're, they're going to talk. talk. They're going to talk. Or bad. Exactly. Don't they're going to talk when I'm doing too much or when I'm not doing enough. They're going to talk when I, you know what I mean, when I show up authentic. So why should I not I be the best me? I'm going to give you something to talk about. That's just what it comes down to. And the reality of it is, and now I... I, I tear up when I think about it because I really believe, like, and Literally. even when it comes to, like, color and, like, living big, like, I Who makes me want to wear color? Listen, I feel like God, like, <laughs> God created color for me. Yes. Like, I, I feel like when you try to, like, you know what I mean, like, oh, you got to do this and you got to, like, you don't know the God that made me. You don't know him. Uh, That's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he created color and life. And all these vibrant things, and they don't have to mean something negative. Yeah, like, like, it means like, like like I'm trying to lighten the mood, or I want yeah. to be I want to be this brightness for you. And I, I there was I have to send you later this um I don't know if it was a YouTube video I was watching or what, but basically, and I can't even repeat it because I'm gonna stumble over my words trying to think about it. But either way, when I tell you when sometimes when you wear like certain colors, especially like the pinks that you wear, you know pinks so much. <laughs> But I and I am not a color. I will not buy anything in color. In general, I will not. I I don't wear anything in color because I feel like I used to be like that all black. I feel like it's an attention grabber. People like you bright as hell. Listen, now I want to because it wasn't so close. Like I'm like, well, I can wear color because she's gonna wear color and then that's all going to be. I did not start feeling like fully me until I started doing this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like 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 that's what I'm saying. Because, exactly. and like Tabitha Brown, I, because I want people to live in color. Mm -hmm. Like I want people to, I want you to come around me and automatically feel lighter. Yes. yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like I Legit got here though. and Legit just though. be, just her energy made me feel like, yo, life is good. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. like 
through everything, Definitely, through yes. everything that I, like, mm -hmm. there are situations that I have made it through that I'm like, yo, if that didn't take me out, if that, then, if, if that didn't take on me a out, daily basis. I am going to live mo as, as uh, unapologetic and encourage people to do the same. Because there's so, like, life has so much to offer. It does. Even with all of our struggles, even with everything that we have, each and every one of you have been through and made it through, life still has so much to give. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In the little things. In being able to pick up your grandbaby and, and them smiling. Uh, in the be in, you know what I mean? In the mom, where are you? You know what I mean? In, in little homie coming around. Like, my birthday. Like, so my birthday. birthday. Is. Exactly. Listen. <laughs> All right, don't put this plug. All right, don't put this plug. My birthday. But yeah, like, I, you know what I mean? That, like, I it want everybody to live, live their most unapologetic, most authentic selves. And do it big and not care about because the people who, who really focus on it, you don't got nothing going on if you focus on what I'm doing. That's just what it comes yeah. down to. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? You need to find and if my healing good. hurts you, sorry to you. Right. Like, not sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Not sorry. Not sorry. Not sorry. to me. Not you. Like, right. like and, and if you have a problem, who are you? Take that up with God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, the end. Or talk me. to him about it. Cause I, because it's your problem, not mine. Mm -hmm. What you feel about me is not my business. No, no. It's not. And it's not going to stop me. It's not going to slow me down. Going to it doesn't affect me not one bit. Right. It right. doesn't. So, nope. you know. Now, I, have you, um, personal question, have you tried therapy? Um, I have. I have. What do you think about therapy? They always want to give me that, <laughs> she said, that stuff. What's the, the medicine? I don't need that. Okay. I just want to uh, talk. Zoloft. Zoloft. <laughs> with like the Sephora. Look, my, my therapist was like, I was like, no. I was like, I'm okay. not crazy. <laughs> I didn't say I was crazy. You know, I just need to get And sometimes, and money. you know what, you do not have to advocate for yourself. Not everybody that takes it is crazy. Yes. No, you I do have to advocate for yourself, though. You no, feel I'm, like you don't. I'm saying, like, I'm not, it wasn't like I wasn't like acting out. You were like the same when they offered it to me, too. Ready to write a script. I was like, I'm not ready for that. But I ain't gonna lie, I've had tried them and they made me feel crazy. No, I did. That's the thing. Listen, my therapist was like, you don't need no medicine. You just need to talk to Yeah, and then nine times out of ten, Listen. that's what it be. Yeah. I just need to talk. Nine I'm times out of ten, everybody in the world needs to smoke some weed. That's it? Yes, girl. I don't smoke the kids, it, but the, the, the views and opinions. <laughs> People be against it. I don't believe in medicine. Period. I'm over no. it. No, I don't want to take a perk. You know what? It's, it's there. I, I do have. There. Some people do need medication. I have yes. an advocate some, for some, medicating, yes. yeah. especially yeah. if you cannot function. If you right, feel like right, right. it's okay. affecting yeah, you in ways needed. that you cannot yes. get through. Like you're, you're you're finding yourself unsuccessful in school. You're finding yourself unsuccessful at work. You can't That's build relationships. Different. Then you do. You need something to help you kind of bridge the gap. But there are other people who just, yeah, they just need to get some things so off their chest. We're functioning. Sometimes we you just need, need to we're like relax people. and like let some things loose. Mm -hmm. That's when, you know, some other things come into play. But I do think, for, first of all, our conversation is not a replacement of, you know, seeing a licensed mental health professional. Yeah. But. Thanks for the disclaimer. There's another <laughs> disclaimer. We are not, we are not professionals. <laughs> but. Personally, I do feel like, you know, there's, a, I would prefer to find out the root of my problem and, and try, to, try to figure out, you know, what it is that's bothering me versus me just, quote unquote, putting yeah, lipstick yeah. on a pig or putting a bandaid over it. You know, if I was struggling with relationships, if I was struggling, you know, at work or in school, then yes, I, I, like, I, I want to be able to be a functional adult and I want to be able to still progress, you know, right. professionally. But we also, I'm fine there. I we, just... we also discount the fact that, you know, people think that anxiety, depression, um, and things like that are like, oh, it, it's just... It's a chemical imbalance. It is legit. Like, and you, these you know, you, you look, right. So just the same way as cancer is a chemical imbalance, you would still, you know, some things you do treat as if it's yes. I will say this: different perspective. Um, I don't know everybody's 
you know, um, faith beliefs and things like that. But I personally was just saying the other day that I would love to get more mental health professionals in church settings because there's because I think that one people, th that's one thousand percent, and for a couple I, of reasons. I agree. Because number one, especially since there are it there's is. such a high rate in individuals that have been um, through things like this who have been victims of um, child abuse, sexual abuse. More not people than not. Not even just that, but like over the, the past few years, there have been a lot depression, of like, anxiety. depression, anxiety. Yes. There have been it's COVID. There, there have been yeah, yeah. Um, so big ministers who have who have died by suicide. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like we, we think that faith Sorry. is all, and it's like, but God created these beautiful human <laughs> beings who went to school for, you know what I mean? Good. For a reason. For us. And but you know, most of the people who have been through um, traumas like this, they denounce God for this reason. So you won't find a yeah. lot of people Too in sure. church who have been, you know, who have who have been through this because, yeah. you know, we start to feel like, or they start to feel like, we start to feel like, you know, God wasn't with us with this. And, and, and a lot of these are people who weren't grounded in faith before the incident happened because usually if you are grounded in faith before these things happen, you understand, you know, what God's part in this was. But if you were not, if you if you weren't, you usually start to lose faith because you're like, why did God let this happen to me? Or how could God let this happen to me? And those are the people who kind of need, especially a mental like professional that. who who is grounded in faith, Encourage who can encourage can, you that this is another way for you to have positive right. affirmations or for you to, t to talk to yourself, to, to give that. yourself some positive thoughts. Yeah. Because eventually after, you know, you go through that kind of trauma, the way to recovery, one of the ways to recovery is positive thoughts, positive thinking, talking to yourself positively, affirmations. Like you have to retrain your mind to kind of push the negative out because you start to have these negative thoughts that you know aren't you, but you start to question like how did how how did I get put in this kind of situation? All right. All right. So having a mental health professional that is grounded in God or who does believe in faith is helpful to help you kind of recover. Yeah. So that's another thing we need to look into. Mm -hmm. That's something we should look into. Yeah. So you say, you, she said, uh, I, I don't need no medicine. <laughs> <laughs> no, give me God and get my faith and you know, sometimes I just need space and then I'll be good. I'll be back again like ain't nothing ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> but how long does that last? Do you find yourself, do you ever find yourself like, um, so I guess you you have you have had a diagnosis of depression. Mm -hmm. Do you ever find yourself having like those kind of mood swings frequently, or do you feel like it's do you, do you feel like you like revert to the, those negative thoughts a lot? Yes, times there's yeah yeah yes. Definitely. You have triggers. Yes. Like yes, is I it have like, triggers, mm -hmm. and yet not quite known of all of them, mm -hmm. which I'm trying to of pay course. attention to it more because even with uh like daily life living and mm -hmm. stress like from things the and stre yes like i might not know that this is something that has really triggered me because back then i just had to deal with it you know what i mean deal with it but being a child mm -hmm. now i'm an adult and you have responsibility yeah, and i have responsibility mm -hmm. so i can't act this way yeah. you know yep. i can't even like brush it off like i used to because i was a kid you know i didn't have to pay bills i didn't have to do this i have to do that now i have to so mm -hmm. i have to be like Okay, get your big girl pants on, talk myself mm -hmm. out of it, whatever the case may be. But like, this is temporary, you know, this guy. But then sometimes it's just be like, I just let it take its course. Yeah. And just, you know, just. And see, talk it's those, time, those times right there when um, I feel like it is so important to, like, I'm always asking God to put people around me that really can see me and can, can handle me with care so that when in those moments there's somebody who can say what do you need right can i you know what i mean right. can, what how can i, can I take I, from you yeah how can i lift your arms up how can i be of service mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah. but nine times out of ten i can't lie i won't lie you know sometimes when i go through that i tend to shut off because that's what i know you yeah know? i shut off and my coping mechanism is given anger sometimes mm -hmm. and i, I would not lie that's me but that's how i that's how you cope. That's how I coped from a child. Mm -hmm. I had to hold it in, deal with it, 
be angry, mad, whatever. But that was the most, the biggest one for me was angry. Wow. I was angry mm -hmm. and I still be angry because that's what I had to give off. And it's like nine times out of ten people that know me know me that something is wrong. If I'm like that, I'm quiet. And it's not really like angry. It's just more like I'm just like non-responsive. Yeah. I'm uh -huh. just silent. Mm -hmm. I just give a silent treatment. And you know, you, you know who I am. You know, mm -hmm. if you love me and you know who you like, me, that's you know me. You already you know. know. Who, give I'm me that space. Around. I'll come back around. Just give me that <laughs> space. But give me a moment. I don't need. <laughs> give me a moment. But I don't need to just leave me in a dirt. Like you know, you can, you can pick your head. You can, go, you can like do a little peekaboo or something. Because <laughs> you know, Whoever some people knows, be you know scared. They, they know me. They know me. But yeah. they be like, oof, that one right there is a firecracker. <laughs> Do you through. feel like your experiences have caused strains on any of your relationships? Um, my relationship with people, with their, their relationships, yes, because I accept the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. The bare minimum. And you and think that's a, that's a trauma response? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Trauma. And accepting whatever when it's not really love. That's not love. I can see the correlation. So how do we turn that around? How does how does that look like going forward now that you can... For me, it's loving me first. Yeah. It's about Amen. me first. It's now, about me. Like, it's always going to be me. <laughs> when you say you can't pour from the season. season up. Yes. It's always yeah. going to be me now. Yeah. Like, and then them. And then yeah. whoever, you know? But it's always gonna be me now. Like, um, if you call me selfish, call me selfish. But I'm selfless. Yeah. yeah. Like for myself. Like I can't. I don't have it in me for nobody else. I don't have the energy for nobody else. I just want to pour that into me. And this is why I feel like I came here today. It's a new beginning for me. Yeah. Look at my hair color. Like I was listen, black. she came in with a shirt. I was like, right? It's the colors is coming in. Like you say. <laughs> is to ask it what's your perfect scenario over the past over the next year what's your perfect scenario when it comes to your peace and your healing what's your perfect scenario um i just want to be whole within myself mm -hmm. my mental health just whole within myself and then my children and whatever else flows yeah mm -hmm. that's it naturally um, let it come naturally, naturally. It let flows. it just well, that's it. Like, no pressure, no, no, none of that. I just don't got that in me anymore to just be like, uh, huh, huh. Like, uh, nah, just let life, let it live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Through me, through, with God and et cetera. Like, because I don't got it in me. I just basically, I don't even want to live for tomorrow. You know what I mean? I just want to live in the moment. for today, in the mm -hmm. moment and be in the moment. And that's it for me. That's it. I can't. Um, yeah, I can't go that far. Because I'm just trying to get by the day, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's yeah. it. That's that's all I can say. But I do want to do it peacefully and be at peace within myself, not for nobody, but for me. And that's it. I think that you will, <laughs> you'll find that you'll have a peace that, but look, scripture says passes all understanding. You won't know what it, you know what I mean? You won't even understand I can cry right now just feeling it you know uh -huh. you won't even feeling. understand right because you live for how long in in the dark in the dark, yeah. in the dark. And, and, and then when i get in the dark sometimes now it's just like oh it gets frustrating because yeah. it's like oh when can i just like you know be be beyond that yeah you know being like, a, when am i going to break through yeah when i'm going to the breakthrough when is the breakthrough you know and it's just like, I, I live in fear because it's like, oh my God, I'm losing my mom. And then I think about that ish too. And I'm just like, oh, like, you know, anxiety is the anxiety for me. And it's just like, I got to stop, but I want to be at peace. And you have to look at life instead of looking at the, the macro. The you have to kind of yeah. 
just kind of break that down. Embrace the small myself. moments. Yeah, embrace just like you the... said, you got to embrace what's coming out of your mouth. Right. You right. literally sat here mm-hmm. and you said, I want to live for the moment. And yeah. I want to. Once you do that, you're good. Yeah. Trust mm-hmm. me. Because yeah. that's where stress anxiety yeah, is. Yeah, because you start thinking. I, yeah, I still right, find right, myself doing that. You be that. trying to put the pressure on yourself so yeah. much because you just try, you want more want for yourself and more for yourself. And mm-hmm. it's like, but there's no need to look rush. around all your blessings mm-hmm. right right yeah. now. Right, yeah. right. And sometimes we get bl- I get blinded by no, that. No, I do that still. And I'd be like, <laughs> what is you bugging for? Why are you bugging? Yeah, I'd be tweaking. I'd be like, I want to do this and this. Yeah. And, and then I forget. I'm like, girl, shut up and oh. sit down. Like, <laughs> like, look around you. Or it wasn't good, even that like, bad. Like, look at you. Yes. Like, it's like, not that bad. Imagine what else you're going to survive. Like, imagine how much you could thrive if you survived that. That's what I tell myself. I'm telling you, the one situation, like, I was almost like, oh, what you got next? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 like, square up. I'm just saying, like, because, like, hold up, humble yourself a little bit. Go back a little bit, because I, I, I it know was, that feeling. It, it was, like, it was like a, you know, like, I, did, I, I didn't lose it. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know what I mean? What was meant for my evil, or what, what was meant to harm me, God turned it around for my good. If, yeah. You know what I mean? He turned it around to um, allow me to bless other people. He, he turned it around to allow me to pour into other people and to re- recalibrate and really figure out some things. So, yeah, when you... Some, some t- sometimes your cocktail is a little bit stronger mm-hmm. than you expected it to be. <laughs> Listen, that's the word. And sometimes your cocktail is a little bit stronger. And those are the things that make you who you are. The The... the the ingredients that make you who you are, you know, some of us is sangria. Maybe you, uh, Henny straight. Mm. It, it, so it's just, <laughs> so that me, that means that, you know, it's a little bit different, but essentially. But that's what makes us great. That's what mm-hmm. makes that you great. Yeah. That's what makes us great. And you know, you can mix and mingle and stuff yes. like that. Yes. You know, everybody's not for everybody. Yeah. No, we're not. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I am, <laughs> no, we're not, we're not. I'm excited for what's to come just, just because I know that there's a, a level of peace coming just because there's, a there, there is, peace, there is power purpose. in just being able to say yeah. the things that you said. Mm-hmm. There's power in being able to take your power back mm-hmm. and you've taken your power back by putting a name to it. You're taking, mm-hmm. you're, you're taking your power back by. Um, speaking up and being able to tell the story to the people around you, to the people that you love, mm-hmm. because most of the time it ain't. It's not even what we say to people that we don't know. It's the the people around us that we fear. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Being open and vulnerable with, mm-hmm. right? Because oh those are the ones that oh you get to us. Because being vulnerable can be the most scariest thing. Yeah. And I told yeah. her like sh- when you've shared that piece of you to the world. You can it can be so frightening because yeah. it's like. That's something I went through, and that was so difficult for me. And I'm putting that out to the world. How am I going to take it when it comes back to me? Right, mm-hmm. right. Because essentially, and this is why I've said the past couple, everybody that's watching is not for her. Yeah, no. that's the reality. We've yeah. had 400, 500 views. You think all those people are like, "Yay, Angie! Yay, Siobhan!" And right. no, the fact, no. Right, I'm sure, Mark. I know that there's fake pages watching them. Like, I, no, I'm serious. Like, n- no, I'm serious. Like, right. that, that, you know, who are just watching to be able to have something to keep key about. And that's mm-hmm. all well and good. But what goes around? God bless you. Comes around. Yep. <laughs> exactly. That's God bless you. How long it takes? Okay. Like I said, God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, seriously, what else can you do? Yeah. You know, when you You're want right. a piece? God bless you. Yeah. When you so, have peace, it ain't going to bother you. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing and to be you. honest, like, I mean, I don't know. We know with Angie. <laughs> it's that first time or that that first couple times of you opening up and disclosing, you know, your story that you really start to feel, mm-hmm. you know, relief. Like it's like, Ooh. man, yeah. you know, I, I let that go. Like, what's next? And and, yeah. and it, it does become sort of a mission. Like, you know, like I feel like, you know, I, I can, you know, share my story. I can accept, you know, people who want to share their stories with yeah. me. Um, you can you become that person who 
you feel like you you need to not even minister is a good word, but you're not ministering. It but is, it's, it's a good is, word. You're, you you yeah. you begin to feel like that is purpose. That is your purpose. Like mm-hmm. I want to be that person that you know others feel safe with coming to to tell their story. I want to feel that I want to be that person that can you know reach other people and let them know what my story was. And, you know, what coming out on the other side looks like. Because a lot of times, there, or most of the time, there are people who are sitting in silence who are going through mm-hmm. and stirring in, you know, trauma. And they're afraid to say anything or they're afraid to tell their story. Um, number one, because of what other people think. Mm-hmm. And, you know, who they think might hear the story and yep. what their reaction might be. Um, and just because they don't realize how many people went through and how many people, mm-hmm. you know, can relate. Like... It literally is not, it, it, uh, sadly, it's not uncommon. It, this happens every day, all day. We are in this together. We have, there's strength in numbers, literally. And, and it says, I mean, it's cliche, but it's so true. You find strength in other people's stories when you share them. I mean, I, as I told in my in the first episode, like, I did therapy. I did a group therapy. And it wasn't even group therapy. It was a group. I don't even know what you want to call it. It was other parents who lost their children, and these parents, they were, they were older parents whose children were grown, they were younger parents whose children were younger. It was, you know, just a space where everybody could share what they had been through, and I literally sat there and said nothing for over a year. And I got nowhere. Like, I still wasn't able to tell my story. I still wasn't able to share what I had been through. And if I did share, I started to cry. You were I, ready. I was not ready. And then I did not realize that once I started talking about it and once I became comfortable in my story, it, it the healing was completely different. It was something completely different. It was different for me. It made me feel better. Um, so being able to talk about it and being able to share with other people, like you don't, I don't think the viewers understand like when you share your stories with us, it's a different level of healing even for us because it makes, I mean, there, there was sort of, cause it's like somebody that, else. Yes. Like now I, like I, it, a conversation is had in which I feel like I'm able to open up even more. You feel like you're able to open up even more. It's, it's, it's healing and therapeutic for, you know, all across the board. So, you know, again, share your stories with us. You know, you can DM us or Facebook message us. I know DM is Instagram. You, I'm young, but I ain't that young. Girl. Um, <laughs> share your stories. Like, you know, lean on us. And we want to be able to lean on you. Yeah. Um, it's And let me just say, the biggest part of that is that the enemy's intent is to make you think that your silence is power. Mm-hmm. That if I don't say anything, that I'm, I'm, I'm strong by holding it to myself. Mm-hmm. Right. When really, he wants to make a lie look like the truth, or the truth look like a lie, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you being able to voice what it is, say it, and put it in the atmosphere is you getting your power back. Mm-hmm. Is you saying that this can no longer hold me hold back. Mm-hmm. This can no longer keep me in in someone else's because of your right because. It, because it's, it's not it's, it's all for you. yours exactly it's i mean you're literally just you're you're comfortable with me being uncomfortable right and i have there is no comfort in being silenced there is right. no you you are I, you're literally stirring in misery because you the whole time you're watching shit going on sorry you're watching shit go on around you and you're like how is this person comfortable with this or how is this person okay with you know being around this person or you know accepting this and the whole time you're like you're like you're just being quiet about what you've been through. You're being, just being quiet about how you feel about something. You cannot. I cannot. I will not. Yep. So, talk. And when have you, that conversation. When you realize that that's a that's a sense of mm-hmm. peace. Sometimes yeah. you gotta be that's an advocate for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that's that's a, the big that's part about it. Being an advocate yep. for you. Mm-hmm. You and tend we, to do it because for others. Because we're taught. We're taught like we're girl, give the same advice to yourself that you just exactly. gave that person. We're taught to give as much grace as possible, to be there for everybody, to mm-hmm. do all those things. Be strong. Even when they're not yeah. there. You keep your head Even up. When, you got yep. this. Yeah. So in reality, they don't really work like that. This no. is looking like this is looking like light. This is looking like next level and being able to 
not just because it, it's not always going to be, you know, everybody thinks that being an advocate or being, being um, there for people is going to be on this grandiose scheme. Like when me and Angie started talking about like how we could, you know, do something for child abuse, I was like, yo, it doesn't have to be us just giving to money to a foundation. It literally could be finding little ways, having little conversations or doing a little workshop for people who are around children to be able to, it's like little ripples. You throw a rock, you're going, you're going, to, you're going to be able to make it spread. So yeah. Angie's already doing it. She's already doing the work without knowing it. So um, again, I, I, am, I am so um, grateful to all of you who have told your stories so candidly, who have been brave and who have when I say candidly, the fact that you, like I said, the fact that y'all, y'all don't be melting is just yeah. beyond me. Because I you know, know, I know for me, I already did enough of that. Yeah, and and it's okay to be, uh, not yeah. that there's anything wrong with melting. It's just you know how you do. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, me, like <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> but um, yes, I love where you're going. I love where you're going. I love where you're, you know, where you become intentional about, you know, your healing and yes. your being the best person that you can up. be. Keep it yeah. up. Like, mm -hmm. even if, you know, there, there are so many other ways you can take this. And, and even if this is just like food for thought, like what else can I do mm -hmm. for the community, for myself? Because yeah. Nick is talking about, okay, now it's all about me. Do you, boo? <laughs> if there is anything you can take from this it is to do what's best for you in whatever way healing looks for you yeah mm -hmm. so if that means i want to tell a million other fucking people if that means i want to post you know his picture on a billboard if that means i want to curse his, the rest of his fucking family out if that's what healing looks like to you then they deserve it because we'll we'll <laughs> we'll we'll <laughs> i'm tired of people telling me to shut up i'm not that's up. it no, don't yeah. shut up no of people saying, oh, you doing that? Or are you playing a victim? I was a victim. Yes. You still like, what? And I still am. Uh, yeah. And Can there's still people out there players? that's victims. Yeah. There's people out there that won't speak yeah. and say what I say. So yeah. I'm here for them. And there are going to and be people. And for kids that, like I was, yeah. eight, yeah. that might be afraid to speak up. Yeah. So just people pay attention to your kids. Who you have around your who kids. Who you have around your kids. You it could be your kids. Their dad, right? their uncle, their cousin, their brother, anyone. 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 And it doesn't just have to be a male. Right. Females it female do it too. too. Yes. You know, and, 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 and it's not just listen, females that, who are victims. There are male victims. That was, that was so my We next, just need um, to be careful. I was kind females. of thinking about doing, I don't know if he's willing, but mm -hmm. it happens. I mean, with a male who. I had a it's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know one. So, from a female. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I, I got literally today, someone reached out to me about someone else. So, I didn't get to talk to that person. So, I, I don't know who did it. I, he is a man. I don't know if, if it was a female or a male that did it to him yet. Okay. But apparently, um, out of all this, they reached out to me so I can speak to that person and um, I don't know where it's gonna go I don't know if he wants to come on here and say it and even if not you or just talking if to not him he is... might want to sit in the background while we're you know or he just wants to talk to me I, d I don't know where it's gonna go but that actually put a smile on my face yeah mm -hmm. cuz I was like oh he want me to me like I'm still not even I'm still Healing. That's like, like, the part that, of that it. That is the beautiful part of it. That is the I most beautiful like, oh, part of it because you can help yourself without overcoming their sorrows or whatever yeah. you go yep. through. And I was That's... so busy today that I didn't get to reach out to him yet. But I was like, I'm gonna either do it tonight or tomorrow, and um, because I want to give him my undivided attention because I don't know where that's gonna go. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Like, I don't know this person. Right. I just know the other And sometimes one. it may be a trigger, but at least you already be prepared for it. Because yeah. it'd be a trigger. It's always going to be a trigger. I don't care what nobody say. That's oh. always a trigger. Like, yeah. I heard your story. It was a trigger for oh me. Oh, my gosh. I was sobbing in the shower. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. Like, oh, my goodness. Well, when you did your post, I was like, stretch. Did you say this? And he's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I was like, oh, my God, look. And he's like, oh, shit. And guess what? You probably wasn't even the only one who reacted that way. I was yeah. like, yo, but I looked at it like, yo, good for her. And, uh -huh. you know, and then Stretch was like, but where he at, though? Like, you know, yeah. he's, he's, he's thinking, like, like, that's like, always like, 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 that is yeah. You know what I mean? He question. looking like, what the yeah. hell? And then the song came on, I'll oh, forget about it. Yeah. Yeah. I was no more. That one heavy. I was no more. I felt the tears in my throat. Um, yeah. Like when you can yeah. feel somebody else's pain, like, like, like that's how I am. Oh, you should. That's fine. I tend to say my other pain, and I feel it. It's a great song. I love it by Sierra. This is for the girls. Yes, for the girl. She played us out yes. for the girls. I'll be listening to it. No, and you can. Okay. Okay. Whatever makes girl. you feel okay. good, you can put it on repeat. <laughs> for real. And that's another another part of positive affirmation or you t putting positive thoughts in your head listening to those songs that make you feel empowered right. or you feel seen that make you yes yes like that is a way for you to get out of your mind get, get out of those negative thoughts mm -hmm. and to put yourself in that you know like i'm going to conquer the world today you know yes. so that's how i felt all day those two before i came here I was in the car like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Went to the gym and everything. I was on yeah. time, honey. <laughs> Don't play with my time. And then up to here, I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I had a hyper up. I said, girl, we're not turning back. <laughs> 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 but I said it. I was like, watch her be late. Oh, I said, I know she ain't going to do it. I was like, I was like, I was like her anxiety started to But I said, she doing a whole and bunch I said, of mom, things. you told this story a thousand times to me, to friends, your close family. Put that She's out like, there. Come on, mom, don't start me. No, we're not about to do that. We ain't going back because now we're going forward. Yeah. Keep going because no, I left going. my purse and every I left my purse back at home. But it was what was in the purse. We're not gonna what talk about that. What she said, I need, what I needed. What she said, she's she like, needed. mom, no. What did you need? <laughs> Huh? My medicine. Oh, but I can't But she said that. Again, you can't collect it. You had the right house. I went to the pharmacy and I forgot it and left it in my purse. Girl. We are so sorry to hear that. But, but you know why I, I can't, can't do that. I probably would be No, but I know I had to give her I'm a proud of you that for moment. Still, yeah, I can yeah. tell already. Her face, her body language. She was trying she to find was, excuses. Yeah, she was trying yeah. to find excuses. And I could see I her shutting that. down. I did that first I episode. I shutting down. I so like, I'm like, no, I'm not having that. <laughs> oh my God, you don't know how many times I was like, if I tell Angie I don't want to do this no more. And then I was like, that's no. That's because I, I always, always, no, I would have pushed you. I'd have been like, I can't nah, say that's how I was. Yeah, because I always asked her like, you know, why did you go and tell? Like, you know, I always question. So I'm like, no, this is her time. Like, she she about to right get now, she about to get her power back. We not. Yeah. We gonna we doing it. Talk and if I gotta be right beside you, I'm gonna be right beside you. Tell your mom what's up. I got to. Like we like best friends, and sometimes oh, she be trying to tell me about myself. She gotta tell her like. Yeah, she was like, you're not the one girl. Not the one or the two. We all need that person. We all need that person. I was like, well, good. That was my other side talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, both of them. Yeah. <laughs> that was I understand. Side. That this was the angel been, side. This has been great. It, it actually mm -hmm. has. Our time is up. I yeah. I do want to play Stretch a Song. Thank you. Because. Thank you for having me, though. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for this coming. Was one of the yes, and thank you for being such amazing, amazing women. Like, I love it. I just love yeah, it. I really awesome. do. And. Your story touched me too, which yeah. is a, that's a, another topic. But uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, I so. praise you for that because I lost someone that was like a son to me too, and I yeah, know that it's feeling. tough. It's mm -hmm. tough, but yeah. lost period. Lost, lost is yes. hard. And life I mean, was prepared yeah. for none of, the none of it. I mean, not just you know losing in death, but just mm -hmm. losing yourself. Yeah. losing mm -hmm. yourself, especially yeah. in you know these you know abuse cases. Like you know you. Even if you don't realize it, you lose, and you do realize it, especially once you become right. an adult, you're like, yeah. I missed this whole, you know, years of me growing and me, right. you know, becoming who I was supposed to be because of what I was. That's why I'm so hippie what now and stuff, because I'm like, I didn't, I lost out on my, yeah. my childhood, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. you know, my, I lost a virginity. That was, that was precious to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. I, I wanted to save that for the man that I married. Like, you know, that's how my mind. Lying. 
I did. I said, but I'm not saying it. You know, she clearly said at eight. Yeah, she did. 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 She she said, I love y'all and so sorry these sick people abused y'all. May you find closure, peace, and strength. May they pay in the pits of hell on earth and beyond. God keep our children protected. Yes. I thought Thank that you, was really, Lisa. I'm like looking at it like, you Amen. know. Yes, hashtag yeah. protect our babies. Yeah. Yes. That's it. Protect yeah. our children. I'm going to go to jail behind mine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to beat the whole world upside and down. Yeah. Mine. Yeah, I love you, Nekka. I love you, You know too. why. Yeah. Um, Jasmine, to new beginnings. Thank you. Yes. To new beginnings. Cheers. All of us. To, in yes. Every, in every angle. Yes. yes. Joanna, stand in your light and watch others come to get some warmth. Fuck them. Yeah. Man, a door, <laughs> Joanna also what? said, a door has opened <laughs> and you're walking through it all while bringing others with you. It's 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 tough, uh, you know. Personally, you know, being able to share these experiences and to know, and and, and I want to say it's tough because I really don't give up about what people say. Their negativity, yes, but I'm it's tough to know that there are people about that. who cannot empathize or who who think that they know more. Mm -hmm. And an experience that they've never even been through. Right. And like, have how are you so. going to tell? How do you, have an, how do you have an input on what I went through? Right. Like, I don't understand even yeah. how a person can have the goal. Yeah. To me, it's just mind blowing. The nerve. That you can even, you know, to, to be able to spread rumors, to be able to take, have your own thought on what happened or what could have happened or what, you know, whatever. Where does that gumption come from? Like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. I just don't, because, I, I don't, I don't understand it. Yeah. Because essentially people don't know who they are and they don't have, they, there is no, most of the time is, there's no, they're like, insecure, there's, 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 they don't right, even know no, themselves. They just they don't have, but they don't, they don't have any, and they can't any stop be like, over their own lives. Yeah. Who? And, and us. Those they don't have the control of their own lives. Exactly. Yeah, they don't have control. And those are the ones that you're like, don't even, they don't even there's no need for revenge because your life is revenge enough. I get it. Like, since you are, you are going to hell enough, girl. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I get it. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 I mean, what did that get to the and again, <laughs> tap the ground. When Wendy, side note, these my people, when I, my Aunt Wendy came for Tabitha Brown, my other aunt, oh, oh remember? Tabitha Brown was like, Wendy, God bless you. And when she said it, I was like, oh, she really She was that. genuine. She like, was genuine yeah. about it because she was like, it must really be bad for you not knowing me for you to, to talk about me the way, like, and for you to not experience the love that I had. Right. God right. bless you. Right. I really did. And she I was, be your sister, she was your friend. We can, we can bond. Like, she know, was really genuine about it. Questions come to me. Yeah. Listen, I, I and, can answer and your questions. It best was because friend. Wendy made comments about Tabitha's husband, and again, Wendy, you don't have that experience. Your husband is not Tabitha Brown's husband. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what right. I mean? We know right. this. Yeah. Right. The media knows this, <laughs> but. I really felt like Tabitha was, she was genuine in saying like, wow, how, how, how bad it must be for you to say that you don't know me and then for you to go in like you did. Mm -hmm. But also, I seen a post that was like, y'all realize Wendy ain't been right since. <laughs> Wendy ain't been right since. Wendy ain't been right since. <laughs> Wendy ain't been right since. She was humble. She was humble. She was humble. Yeah. That, that humbled her. That, yeah. that brought her down yeah. three notches. <laughs> well, three notches. For some people, there is no humbling. Them. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the, the yeah. that, that blows my mind. But life will humble you, so again, you know, God bless you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't so, say God bless you. this has been, huh? I can't say it. What's your world? I got other choice words. She said she don't want to. Ma'am, look. Well, you know her trip. Look, exactly. Vete pa carajo. If I can say it that fast. Vete pa carajo. I know. Remy Mock said it in the song. That's all you know is the Remy Mock song. That's all I know. That's all I know. That's all I know. That's all I know. Again, this has been a great time. 
the Kiss Collective is a space where we create, um, it, I don't even like to call it a podcast because it's more than that. It's a creative space to promote community empowerment, to tell the story of the unheard, and to essentially just restore a message of hope. So if you would like to sponsor an episode, we are looking for sponsors. Um, and there are so many different ways that you can sponsor. There are so many different avenues that you can be a part, not just by telling your story, but there are things that we've got going on in the background. There are events that we want to do. There are different um, efforts that we want to be a part of. And we would love for you to partner with us. Um, so if you would like to do that, you can DM the, the Kiss Collective or instant message, whatever you want to call it, whatever Siobhan struggles with. Um, you, <laughs> you can do that. Um, and I am going to, I'm going to get close and play Stretch a Song and then we're going to take it out. Real quick before you do that. Okay. So, Child Abuse and Sexual Abuse Month is, that that's Today much was it. Or almost over. Yeah. Today is the last Monday. Yes. Because there's only 30 days in yes. April. So, okay. just right. want to. So, we're probably, I mean, it's, I but don't. But for me, it's and forever. I'm sure they feel the same, is every month, every yeah. year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, just saying. Yeah, so if I you mean, want to speak up, you're still. Yeah, there's time. never, it's, it's always a space. Yes, never it's too late. It's always a space, yeah. Never too late. And I, I believe that after tonight, there, one person will have a conversation with their yeah. child, another person will have yeah. a conversation with yeah. their. Yeah. Please, you know what I mean? Yeah. All those Please. things. So if we've done, if you've done nothing else, <coughs> we started the conversation. We started yeah. the conversation, yep. Yeah. yep. So, I'm going to play the song, we're going to take it out. from harm in a world that's so cruel. But 
what do you do when that trust is broken? And the people that we trust show us how cruel this world can really be. That's the question that needs to be asked. Hashtag protect our children.